guys good afternoon welcome back to our channel hey beautiful people i throw a salute to anybody in the house anybody home say hello if you can hear me good morning good morning over the farm, I salute you guys. Welcome. Good morning. Good afternoon. We are afternoon here, but you guys are just waking up. You are just waking up over there. So, I'm waking you up this morning with a, a live stream. <laughs> oh, dear. Welcome, welcome everybody. Good morning, I salute you. How is everybody doing? Obviously, this was not planned. Now, brother Ben, I find my trouble. Our brother Ben is the one that got me here. I was staying on my own J -J -J on Saturday morning. I said today I'm going to have a lazy day. I'm not going to cook. I'm not going to clean. I just want to lie in bed and watch Anikolakpo. I want to watch uh, Anokulakpo, The Rise of the Spectre. That's what I want to watch, the series. And I started watching it since last night, captivating. Highly recommend it. It's, fin it's fantastic. I was not disappointed. I enjoyed Anikulakpo 1 so much. I have been waiting for March 1st for Anikulakpo, the series, to begin. And hmm, come and see me yesterday. I couldn't wait. It was like it's me that uh, Kunle Afolayan sent to do the to do the paparazzi and PR for for the for for it. Oh my God! Good morning from Vancouver. Lifestyle with Elizabeth. Welcome. Good morning from London. How are you? So glad to see you guys. How many of you have seen Anikola Anikola this The Rise of the Spectre? It's so captivating. I've not finished yet, so I'm not going to do any spoiler for you guys, but I highly recommend it. It's good cinema. Fantastic work. It's really, really good. And I like the fact that not a single word of English was spoken. You know how sometimes you watch, watch some um, Yoruba films or ethnic films and they keep speaking English. You are wondering, is this an English film? Or this one, not a single word of English. I love it. I love it. And the, what's it called? The, the subtitles are spot on. Very, very good. I can't even complain. Fantastic. I'm still watching. Bing Pei, how are you? Uh, Annie Babe, did you watch that Brother Ben's rant? I'm here to do a reaction to Brother Ben's rant too. <laughs> Brother Ben was ranting. You know, he likes to do bro code. <laughs> So let me give you guys a background of this story I'm about to do today. <laughs> Ashanti, oh, you don't understand Yoruba. Yeah, the subtitles are quite good. You see, enjoy it. It's fantastic cinema. Please support that movie. Let's support our own. Let's keep putting money in our own pockets. Let's not give all our money away. We are a community. We are a people. Mm, let's support one another. There's too much division in, 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 in the black community. And that's why... It's, it's so difficult for us to have all this generational wealth. If black people can come together, it's amazing the things that we can do. But there's too much division. And the story I'm about to do today is exactly, is, is pointing to what I'm saying now. Because it's exactly what divides us. African-American versus Africa. African-American versus Nigeria. Especially Nigeria. <laughs> Sometimes you're wondering, hey, kill us, hey. what did Nigerians, what Nigerian men, kill us, hey. What did you people do? <laughs> but today I'm all for the brothers. I'm here to I'm here for the brothers today. You know how we are as Nigerians. Let me tell you something about Nigerians. Nigerians are very, very funny people. We can stay all day fighting one another. Okay? We'll be basketballs, giving each other basketballs. But when it comes to, you know, fighting for ourselves against somebody, it's like brothers and sisters. You know, at home, you and your brothers, you will fight. You and your sisters will fight. But when somebody from outside comes to fight you, you will now unite and fight the person. That's how Nigerians are. 
So a lot of people say that I'm very critical on, on, on Nigerian men. I'm so critical on black men. So today I've come to I've come to I've come to tell you, brothers, that you know, you are my brothers. I love you guys. Honestly. I keep telling you guys, I have a Nigerian man, I have Nigerian sons, so I cannot hate Nigerian men. Nigerian men are the best black men in the world. <laughs> And today, I'm here to prove it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am here today to support the motion that Nigerian black men are the best black men on this earth. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm here to do. <laughs> um, so Nigerian men hate, they hate my guts. <laughs> they say I'm the ones that are teaching their wife. I'm opening their wife. But anybody that that doesn't like me is a mongo pack, to be honest. <laughs> How can you not like me? I'm very likable. I'm a very likable person. Mm? Apart from the fact that I'm very fine. I'm also very friendly. And I'm kind. So, <laughs> how can you not like me if you don't like me? If you don't like my show, you're a mongo pack. <laughs> Joy, my holy laughter. <laughs> No, I'm here for my brothers today, oh joy. Honestly, I'm here for I'm here to defend the motion today that Nigerian men are the best men, best black men on surface earth. I'll prove it to you. I have points to prove it to you. So let me tell you what started it. This is what started this gist today. Ben, our brother Ben Afro Tize, was the one that did a rant. I'm going to show you the rant. And sent it to me. Me, I didn't even know. Okay, I didn't know. He sent it to me. I saw it this morning and he was like, Auntie B, I want you to watch this and tell me. He was looking for my, he was asking for my uh, opinion about the rant that he did. When Brother Ben rant is so funny. Because the way he rants, eh, <laughs> his voice will change. <laughs> ben, eh, Joma, my Jerry, Undo is far. Brother, Undo is far. Your rant, eh? Do you notice that when you are ranting that your voice usually change? <laughs> His voice will now become something else. I'm like, ah, ah, oh, that needs to rule, brother Ben. He titled the rant. I'm going to share the link later on, guys, so you can see it. Uh, Bing Bay said, Auntie B, in all honesty, I'm tired of defending Nigerian men. The way some of them speak ill of Nigerian women, no wonder. You wonder who their mothers are. Yeah. It's the ones that are ill-informed. Yeah. The real ones, they don't speak bad of us. All those small, small ones. Forget about those ones on social media. Do you know what I realized? Being paid, let me tell you something. I posted something on a blog the other day when the minister, you know how I told you guys I was feeling very, I was so angry. It's, it's funny how my anger has dissipated now. I was thinking of doing it today, but I don't have the anger anymore. <laughs> when you want to rant, eh, do it that day. If you don't do it that day, the anger will evaporate. My anger has evaporated. I can't even come up with the anger anymore now. Oh my God. Who has energy to be holding, holding on to anger for how many days? Emiko? Uh, life is too short though. I don't have energy. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> so brother Ben. Okay. Brother Ben said that uh, he did a show where he was ranting. And what, he, what was pissing him off was apparently, I think somebody even posted it on the US group. Brother Ben, are you still in the U.S. group? I don't know whether you are still there or not. But somebody did a show. I think it's an African-American YouTuber. did a show and was basically dragging Nigerian men. Okay? Somebody posted it on the U.S. group. I didn't watch it because I don't want to see that. Because I know it's going to trigger me. So I said, you know what? No. There's no point. And apparently they said the person was using the video as an example. He used Akon and the video, all these celebrities, musicians, as example of what the average Nigerian man is. I say, ah. So when I saw it in the group, I was like, Shay, is this person all right? How are you going to use the video as a representative of Nigeria, the average Nigerian man? No. It's like using the canon to say this is how Nigerian, Nigerian men are.
So I, I sorry guys. I didn't listen to it. I was like, mm, what was this person saying? <laughs> Nine brother Ben can they run to he they ran rant. He now said that he did a show and said African black queens leave Nigerian men the F alone. I say ah ah. Brother there were binubai shake ah kilo leto bai ah ah. What what apple? What apple? <laughs> so and I said okay. Uh, let me listen. I listened, and then he was now bringing out all the positive points. You know how I always tell you that our black brothers they like to do uh, bro code, but I like the fact that Braben was very very objective. He was very objective in his in what he was saying about Nigerian men. He was defending Nigerian men and bringing out the good qualities of Nigerian men. Okay. Let's listen to a bit of that first before I now play an audio. I'll tell you about my conversation with my friend who is a Zimbabwean woman. But first, let's listen to what Brad Ben had to say. Brad Ben was so angry. In case you're wondering, why would Ben choose this topic? Why would Ben choose to um, say something about American black women? Well, <laughs> I've got my reason. And the reason I'm doing this is because I stumbled upon a video on YouTube from a YouTube content creator. I don't even want to mention her name because all she said about Nigerian men was BS. It's annoying. In fact, if we Africans, we Nigerians, if we said 10% of what she said about Nigerian men, if we said such about black American men, <laughs> the internet will explode. First of all, there's a reason why I stay away from such topics. Mm? I stay away from this because it's very, very political and it's also controversial. All right. This divide, African-American, Africans, is very, very controversial. People always have a feeling that, okay, uh, Africans don't like African-Americans. And some people, some Africans will say African-Americans don't like Africans. It's just, I don't know. These are all stereotypes. Because no matter how you want to run this, you will still find Africans that are married to African-American women. And you find you know, African-American men that are married to, to African women. So it's uh, stereotypes. And I believe people use these narratives, including people from our own community, to, to create these divides. Mm? They create this divide. The person that did the video is not is, is an African-American. It's not a black person. It's not a Nigerian or an African person. Okay. So, Braben said that an, an African-American woman was saying so many BS about Nigerian men. And the person apparently is married to an African man, maybe from Ghana or thereabouts, all that. Okay. You guys know that I'm number one person that I'm going to hold. I'm always holding uh, Nigerian men accountable. That's why a lot of them don't like me. They think I'm very, very hard on Nigerian men. But the truth is that there's a saying that it's who you love that you correct. Okay. If you don't love somebody, and even if they turn their head upside down, they are walking with their feet up, you just look away. Kilo coin. But when you love someone, you want them to be better. So at the end of the day, it's all love. That's the way I see it here. Mm -hmm. It's very, very, it's, it's all about love. And we're trying to make our brothers better. We're trying to make our brothers, you know, to be accountable, especially when it comes to the issue of DV. This is where I disagree. When it comes to the issue of DV, you guys know my stand on it. I put my foot down. I don't care, you know, how good you are, what you do. When it comes to DV, no, 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 no. Okay? So, Braben was not talking about the qualities of Nigerian men. And it's funny. He listed them. The first thing he said is that Nigerian men... Okay, so this is the video that started this whole so-called drama. Somebody made... I think this video is quite old. I saw it a while ago, not today. Um... She's an African-American woman and said that she never dates African-American men anymore because she feels that Nigeria and um, African men are better, in her opinion. Okay, so let's just listen One to thing this. I have realized as an American woman since I started dating American men and I started dating African men, more so Nigerian men, is we as women were and are settling for the bare minimum with American men. Example, Nigerian men, African men, whatever, they will bow down to your feet, literally. They will not watch you struggle. They know how to take care of home. They know how to respect their marriage, in a sense. Um, but 
and I love American men. Don't get me wrong. I'm American myself, but I feel like our men weren't raised to, a lot of us grew up in broken homes. So Thank it's you. normal in America for our men not to know, you know, how to treat their women or how to love properly or just how to be masculine in a sense. Like, so this is your sign to stop dating men and settling for men because that is your type. Try something different. I started dating African men a few years ago. I will never look back. You see, um, I hope you all got that right. So that is it. That is when she started ranting. I mean, that YouTuber lady, I don't want to mention her name because I don't even want you guys to go follow her or anything. That's when she started ripping Nigeria men apart. She goes, oh no, why would she say that? Nigeria men are these, Nigeria men are... So first of all, you will see that, you know, sometimes I think content creators like that who try to be controversial do it on purpose. It's like CEO, that woman that calls herself CEO. She would deliberately do things that are controversial because she wants to create traffic. Okay? Because if you say Nigerian men are this, they are that, how many of them do you know? How many of them have you been with? Have you been to Nigeria before? Have you? Have you ever been to Lagos? You've been to Benin. You've been to Wari. You've been to Onicha. You've been to Wiri. You've been to Kaduna. Kanu. Kasina. How many places have you been to in Nigeria? How many Nigerian men do you know? So that's very, very, a very, very myopic and, of course, a very controversial thing. And I feel like maybe she was just saying it to get under people's skin. She did succeed in getting under Ben's skin, I must say, because he was so angry. And then he now went ahead and told us about, you know, the real Nigerian man, what they stand for. Dad, Nigeria, like, what the F? I'll tell you this. Nigerian men are probably one of the best things that could ever happen to some of you ladies. Respect to my Black American sisters who have been married to Nigerian men for the longest. Because this beautiful queen who married Nigerian men, they don't come out on social media and start telling you guys how the Nigerian men has been more of a man to her, how the Nigerian men have been treating her, taking care of her children, taking care of everything about her. Your guys don't know. You only listen to these TikTokers and some of these ladies like the one I'm playing the video from her YouTube channel right now. And you just hang on to that. And by the time you see a good man, you just let them slide by. Because one YouTuber decided to run her mouth without even looking at the bright side. So uh, without further ado, let me start uh, highlighting what makes Nigerian men unique. That video is long. Like I told you, she did over an hour video pulling down Nigerian men. But I don't have time for that because it's, it's annoying watching it like literally want to make me go to her page and leave some terrible comment. But you know, I, I don't do that. I don't do that. I believe she's entitled to her opinion. And that is why I decided to do this video because I'm also entitled to my opinion. So let's get to this. What are those things that set Nigerian men apart? And what are the things you should know before you even start dating? Not to talk about starting relationship with the Nigerian men. Um, guys, if you're just joining us, please give us a thumbs up. Before I get to what um, Ben was saying regarding, uh, obviously, he was doing the video to counter what uh, that the person was saying about Nigerian men because I think that's a very ignorant thing to say. You don't you don't know Nigerian men. How many Nigerian men do you know? Okay, uh, I don't know why the person did that. You know, but. People do crazy things for social media to drive traffic, yeah? So before I get... Braben was telling us all the things that, you know, he wanted to break it down from his own angle, what he feels Nigerian men stand for. But before I get there, I wanted to take this um, comment. Mama Sita said, Nigerian men are providers, but they are physically abusive and they cheat a lot. So that's also a very stereotypical so, um statement um mama sita very very is exactly what i was talking about now how many nigerian men have you been with okay first of all it's not only nigerian men that cheats okay men across the world including the african-american men a lot cheat okay 
So when people want to create this stereotype, they just say things, blanket things about a group of people. And it's not every Nigerian man that cheats. Hmm? It's not every Nigerian man that cheats. Adana said, I disagree with white men who are providers also cheat. I saw a video, Sissy shared it with me. We saw a white mongo pack, didn't we, Sissy, two days ago. The wife had just come back from hospital two days prior. This is the problem of, you know, comparison. You don't compare. You know what you know. What you don't know, you don't know. It's simple. Our view of the world is very, very narrow. And perception is your reality. Whatever your perception is, what you know is your reality. But don't use your very narrow perception to judge everybody. That's where the mistake is. So we saw this Oyibo Mongo Park. The wife gave birth two days earlier. Do you know what he was saying? He was telling the wife to go and cook. He should make, that she should make roast because his parents are coming. And the woman was recording it. Is that a Nigerian man? So I'm trying to say that whatever you are looking for, you find it across board. If you are looking for men who cheat, Oyibo, they cheat. Asians, they cheat. Men that are not, in fact... Other African men that are not Nigerians that don't even provide like Nigerian men and then cheat pass. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. So let's be careful when we make, you know, a comparison because what you don't know, you don't know. Mm -hmm. And when you want to talk about, you know, being abusive, it's not, it's not in only one culture. It was all across the world. So let's not compare. It's always very, very, um, when you compare, you lose your argument. You lose it. The reason somebody was it came for me the other day and was send me an e email and was like, you, 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 just talking, 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 talking. Hey, why don't you? Why are you always talking about Nigerian women that are deleted? Can't you see across the world that men too are deleted? And I say, Uncle Farabale, just relax, Uncle, relax. Do you see me doing shows about? Have you ever seen me come here to do shows about the, even the UK where I live? How many sh shows did you see me coming to do here about Oyibo men or Oyibo relationships? I don't because that's none of my business. Mm? I dwell on what affects my community. No, it's not what is happening worldwide. So that's not my business. Whether people are doing it, this uh, 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 is none of my business. This is what I'm saying. Uh -huh. So let's always think like that. Uh -huh. There are always bad apples in every tree. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, Terefa say, Thank you so much, Auntie B. Your unbiased opinions indicate they're well enlightened, self confident lady. They are also bad apples among humans. Yeah. Do you know, I'm very, very, I'm not going to deny that I'm hard on Nigerian men. I am. Do you know why? Because I want them to be better. It's not because I don't love them. I love my brothers. I love my man. I love my kids who are boys men <laughs> so no as far as i'm concerned and i said it here times with that number i don't think any other black men in the world can stand when nigeria the average nigerian man is standing that's why you see that a lot of nigerian women don't date men that are not black men that are not nigerians do you know why because the other black men pale in comparison to nigerian men they do that's just the truth because the standard that Nigerian women have set for their men is very, very high compared to other, 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 other black communities. We set very high, high standard, starting from your mothers, how your mothers and your parents raise you. Our parents raise our brothers. Some of them might not be domesticated. They don't know how to cook or they don't do anything at home. But caring for your family is something that was knocked into their head from an early age. A man provides. A man takes care of his family. So, what are we talking about? So, uh, no, 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 no. He's not comparing. I'm just making statements, Miss E. It's true. He's not comparing. I'm not comparing. I'm stating facts here. Eh? Miss E is here. Miss E is here. I'm not comparing. No. I don't need to compare. This is a fact. If you take 10 Nigerian men and take 10 men that black men from that are non Nigerian, eight of the Nigerian men will beat the rest flat down. That's the truth. I know that. But you know what? I keep being hard on them because I want them to be better. 
especially in the area of, you know, having healthy, you know, I'm all about healthy relationships. Mm. I'm not trying to compare. Okay. This is a fact. And I'm going to prove it to you tonight. That's why we're here. And it's rule now. People should be patient. Tell me tea. Be patient. Nisuru, I'm coming. Mume akwa. Mume akwa lakpo. Just relax. And that's how today now. Yeah. So we are going somewhere. Be patient. So Braben went to list some of the things that he thinks, in his opinion, that Nigerian men are good at. Let's have a quick look. We're not going to listen because it's long. We'll just jump at it. The first thing he said, incidentally, is that Nigerian men love their mother. Me, this is me now as a mom. My belly they sweet me. <laughs> as I have sons, <laughs> my belly can they sweet me. When Mraben said, Nigerian men love their mother. <laughs> my belly can they sweet me. I say, okay, this is a good one. That's the first point. I'm going to be forwarding it so that we can listen to all of them. Then I will now come and tell you my conversation with my Zimbabwean friend. Nisuru, I'm coming. Just give this video a thumbs up. We are here. I'm not even in a rush today. It's Saturday and I'm bored. Okay. Where are they? If you can't cope with any of this, please just let Nigerian men keep going and you two keep moving, okay? Keep it going. Number one, Nigerian men love their mom. Yes, I said it. We Nigerian men, we love our mom. In that video, she went ahead and ripped Nigerian mom apart. She was like, oh, when you date with them, their mom, they, when their mom call, they got to go and answer. When their mom says something, they listen. In fact, their mom have the final say. Yes, lady, I don't want to cause you out, but know this, we were raised to love our mom. I don't want to do comparison because this might become a kind of ethnic battle. I don't want to do that, but I'm just going to hang on to my Nigerian perspective to talk about this. We Nigerian men, we love our mom. And it doesn't matter how beautiful you are. It doesn't matter who, whoever, who the F you think you are. Just because we are in a relationship with you or because we are married to you, now you want us to neglect our mom. We don't do that. Okay. To the next point, I'm going to... Atikba, Braben, Ebinu Gong. To the next point, I'm going to tell you guys right now. It means that we are... No, I've missed one. We love our mom. The next one is provide pride in that. Mm -hmm. And because we are providers... The, the, the next point is that Nigerian men provide... After loving your wife, they provide. We are providers. We work and we work harder. If you see 10 Nigerian men right here, no matter where you live in the United States, you come across 10 Nigerian men, chances are the whole 10 of them are working. We don't rely on government program, government benefit or anything to pay our bills or to take care of our family. We don't do that. We work hard. Let that sink in. And because we work hard, that may leads me to the next point I'm going to tell you guys right now. It means that we are not clingy. I know if you're listening, you might have issue with my accent. I really don't care. But if you're listening, you will know what I'm saying. We are not clingy. I've seen this and I'm going to say this. We do respect to those black brothers who went to school or get some certification and they are working hard, they are providing and protecting their family. Respect to you black American brothers who are doing that. But we've seen majority of some of these black American brothers who are very, very clinging with their women. They are always around their women, always. They can't, they can't even breathe without the woman. You know why? Because some of them don't have a job. They need your money. They need your money to buy their Jordan. They need your money to, to get a car. They need your money. They don't do nothing. And that is why Tyler Perry said, if you find yourself a borrowed brother, who can pay the electricity bill? Why not settle for him? Let me tell you something. We Nigerian men, we don't pay electricity bills. We pay mortgages. We pay rent. We pay car note. We pay every damn bill. Preach it, bro. Preach it. Bro, bro, bro is on house. fire. <laughs> don't get me wrong. We have beautiful wife, hardworking wives too that help. They also help in paying the bills. But what I'm saying is, is we don't do no 50-50. That's true. That's on point. That is on point, bro. That is on point. <laughs> that is on point. Mm -hmm. and, and you should give it to Braben now. He's trying. He's different. He's broke code. <laughs> oh, my God, Braben. When I keep telling you people that Braben, the broke code is not easy. She better didn't see have you ever seen Braben angry like this before? Uh-huh. He said we pay our bills. Okay. 
he's made the point. Let me move on to the next one. He has many points too. We pay our bills. What's the next one? Aha. This one, I've never heard this one before. I never heard this one before. Let's hear. He want to cling to you. He want to live with you. We don't do that BS. You just keep going before I, before I piss some people <laughs> off and they start coming after me. Well, number four, yeah. Number four, we are not hobo. Look at the screen. You're gonna see the full. I don't want to. I don't want to pronounce it fully because of YouTube strike or something like that. But we are not this. Look at my screen right now. We are not this. And in case you don't know the meaning of this, Google it. It means a man that have sex with a woman to avoid. Look around you, wherever you live, and later anywhere around the black communities. Men are the one moving in with their women. We don't do that. I know this may sound harsh, but it's just the tone in which that lady talked. That's why I'm, I'm doing this like this. So this is a reaction. If you are listening to this and you're wondering why is he talking like this? Is he stereotyping as well? But this is a reaction, okay? He's reacting to what somebody had said, whereby this person had literally put Nigerian men down so much, bash them properly using the video as an example. So it's a reaction. It's not comparison. He's reacting now, telling you, these are facts about my brothers that you were bashing on your show. All right? Okay. So I want you to put that in mind before you now come and say, oh, but you are doing the same thing. No, it's not the same. It's a reaction to what somebody had said earlier. If you go and watch, maybe you saw that YouTube video. I don't know. I didn't watch it. Personally, because I didn't want to listen to all that BS. So I didn't watch it. But some people did. And this is a reaction. You know how we say sometimes that you can't treat people or you can't say something to someone and you also control how they react or how they feel about it. This is what's going on here. This is a reaction to what someone had said. So you cannot now say, why are you saying that? When you, when you trigger that reaction. You said something to them. Now they are responding. Oh, you say, oh, you don't have a right to respond that way. That's that's gaslighting. Okay, let's quickly finish this because I want to talk to you guys about my Zimbabwean friend. This is that one is so funny. Okay, Raben, Ebinu gone. This is why it's called Beno rant. I'm just ranting here. I may be wrong. You're free to your opinion. Leave whatever you think in the comment. This right here, this right here, you see on the screen right now. Nigerian men, we don't do that. We don't play like that. We don't move into women's house. We don't live with you. The Nigerian men, you're going to come across that you're dating and he's going to agree to live with you. He's either a man who needs paper. And I'm going to say it again. He either needs paper and you agree to it and then you guys have to live together. So he, I don't want to go that route. But Somebody is saying, I'm still waiting to see uh lila eats review film said i'm still waiting to be convinced that nigerian men are the best black men mm. it's a fact i'm not comparing that is a fact okay uh -huh. so wait don't worry that is a fact you can't compare any men anywhere i'm talking about black men no not all that culture so black men is what i'm talking about okay uh -huh. I don't see any other black men in any ethnic group anywhere across the world you're going to compare to Nigerian men. And this is me that is their number one critic saying it. But I'm not criticizing them or I'm not being hard on them when I do my show for me not to know what the, what the average Nigerian man stands for in terms of what they bring to the table and how they, how they behave in their family lives. Come on now. Leave that too. Leave matter. Just leave matter. <laughs> Leave matter if you if you hear story. <laughs> if you hear story, story, like I said, Brian Ben, I think we're gonna leave you here because I have a, a long way to go. So which other uh, example do you have? A binu gone. You know what I'm saying. Uh give us a thumbs up. Uh you say Nigerian men are husband that materia. <laughs> oh my we God. are husband material. <laughs> yes, I said it. I said what I said, y'all. We are husband material. We were raised to be husband material. Right from when we were teenagers, all the way till we grown into adulthood, our parents raised us to be husband material. And what makes husband material? It means we have to provide and protect.
It means we have to hold on to our job. It means we have to respect our women. It means we have to treat our women like a queen. It means we have to allow our women to have a say. It means we have to hold our women in high esteem. It means that no matter how our women body changes, maybe when we meet her, she was slim. And now that she started pumping our baby, she became big. We accept her like that. That's how we were raised. Yeah. We are raised to be the head of the family. Uh-huh. So we are not clingy. We are hardworking. Uh-huh. Whatever that lady is saying, I think that's our own experience. And when I was worried to what you are criticizing. Yeah. And the person is... And there's a whole African. bunch of women in the chat saying, oh, Nigerian men, they are terrible. Nigerian men, they are these. This is where social media... Why people keep going to... <laughs> if Nigerian men are not bad, all these videos that we keep seeing, Unko, of all these people, including all those they are always going to Nigeria. <laughs> Oh, I don't get power. Oh. I can't fight too. <laughs> I can't fight. But let's go to the last point. Let's go to the last point. And this is where I thought Only Baby is going to love Brother Ben for this point because he was very, very accountable. When he finished talking about husband material, he said, We like beautiful women. Nigerian men like beautiful women. Okay. Nigeria men. The number six element is we like women. Yes. We like women. We like beautiful women. I said what I said. Uh-huh. Not all, but Nigerian men like beautiful women, even while they are married. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I know this is where my African brothers and my Nigerian brothers and sisters will come for me, but I have to say it. A lot of Nigerian men like beautiful women. I like women too. Uh-huh. And the fact that we are married doesn't mean that we don't like women. We still like women. We appreciate them. We compliment them when we see one. But well, here's the problem. A lot of Nigerian men will cheat on their wife. Look at my eyes. A lot of Nigerian men will cheat on their wives. I like the fact that he said that. Because that's accountability that we're always preaching. When he was just saying that, I was like, this is Hmm, Brother Ben is learning. He's learning. He's learning. Not only babe. Only babe would have heard you accountable. Our accountability prefects. Do you know? Yeah. But he did say something here again as well about, you know, a lot of Nigerian men will cheat. But is he everybody? No. Because they like women. But not everyone. We still have a whole lot of decent Nigerian men out there who are married and they stay committed to their marriage. They stay committed to their wife. They would never cheat on their wife. Does that mean that sometimes when they see beautiful women, they don't compliment them? No. Yes, they compliment them. I do the same. I compliment my co-workers. I compliment my classmates. I compliment my neighbors. When you look good, I tell you you look good. But do I have to run around? I don't. Does that mean many other Nigerian men won't do the same? Yes. We are human. A lot of Nigerian men don't cheat on their wife, contrary to what you hear on social media. And then we still have a larger percentage of Nigerian men that will literally cheat on their wife. So if you are American black sisters and you are in a relationship with a Nigerian man, have it at the back of your mind that this dude, this African black butt dude might cheat on me. Uh This is hard, I know, but it's the reality. Now, does that mean Nigerian men are the only one who cheat? Hell no. Uh-huh. And black American men cheat like, I don't even want to say it. Black American men cheat too. It's their thing. That is why there is a high rate of divorce in the black community because black queens can't take it. American black, beautiful, gorgeous ladies, they can't stand it. That you cheat on them? Hell no. That is the end of the relationship. Uh-huh. That is why they don't have that level of tolerance that a man can cheat on them and they're still going to remain in the marriage. It's not done. Only few exceptional wisdom-based American women, American black women, will stay in the marriage after cheating. It's Unlike cheating Nigerian okay. women. Hell no, it's wrong. Uh-huh. But can it happen in your marriage? Absolutely. Uh-huh. So, so let's just say unlike Nigerian women uh, that have more tolerance towards it. Okay? So I absolutely agree with him on that. Nigerian women tend to have more tolerance. Somebody is saying in the comment section that a lot of Nigerian men, J.O. said, a lot of Nigeria, Nigerians grow up in polygamy, polygamy family. So they see it as a norm. Yeah, that's also true. Okay. But, Oman, so, Ikbe, Tomba, Tomba, Binyo, Oman, Tuara, Ebi, 
So when you are born, you you rebirth yourself, okay? Uh -huh. What you said about the tolerance thing is absolutely spot on. Anyway, Braben, well done, well done. I can see that. That person really got under your skin. Good rant. Good rant. You got it off your chest. You got it off your chest. It doesn't matter whether you agree or disagree. This is his own opinion. If you don't agree, do your own show and say your own. Lobaton. Anyway, let me get back to the gist on grand. So this was what started it. I watched it. I was laughing. And I said, Raben, ah, this thing, it really paying you. What did this person say that God, he said the person was just bashing Nigerian men. And as a Nigerian man, man himself, he felt like he needed to represent his brothers. <laughs> Bro code is real. He felt like he needed to represent Nigerian men. <laughs> Raben was pissed off. He was so angry. Oh, Dungo. Anyway, I'm a no. No verse. We will know your value. We just want you to be better. That's all. You know, when you love someone, you want, want them to be better. We love our Nigerian men, no? So we started having a conversation when I, uh, after I watched the show, I sent it to Honey Babe. I said, Honey Babe, have a look at this. This is so funny. I sent it to her on WhatsApp. That's Brother Ben. Uh, let me share it with you guys so you can watch it later. You can watch the full video. It's not too long. It's just uh, about um, maybe 30 minutes. I'll share it in the, in, the, in, the, in the comment section so you can watch it later. It's a good rant. It's a good rant. It's, it's the way his voice was going up and down that made me laugh. When he's angry, his voice, <laughs> his voice is funny. Please give us a thumbs up, guys. Give us a thumbs up. Okay. So, what happened? I started having a conversation with my... I have a friend. She is from Zim. Zim is the short form of Zimbabwe. All right? And this is my friend. She's, she's been here for some time. She's a nurse. Young girl. Beautiful girl. We talk a lot about relationships. A lot. And we started talking about her sister. And she was telling me how, you know, her sister got married recently and how the sister was asking her money for deposits. <laughs> I didn't understand. So the sister got married and was asking her money for deposit for a house. For her and her husband to live in. <laughs> I said, <laughs> you know eh, how they say perceptive uh, perception is reality. In my own mind, you know I'm a Nigerian woman, right? And my... In my, in the way I was raised, a man needs to have at least, even if it's a one bedroom, for him to be considering marriage, you need to have accommodation. Where you won't marry the wife, put if you don't get accommodation. I don't understand. I know in some cultures in the West, in Nigeria, in some of these uh, artisans in uh, Lagos and all those areas, Ogun State, Yoruba land. I've heard of stories of um, men, young men who go and marry because Yoruba people tend to marry very early. The men used to marry, they tend to marry very early. So you see a 20 something year old Yoruba man is already getting married. Unlike in the Eastern part of Nigeria where men tend to be more financially secure before they will even consider marriage. Okay, they tend to be, they want to have things that will make the wife comfortable. And of course, the bride price is not moi moi. So, so in my mind, I was like, why would your sister be looking for money to pay a deposit? He said, uh, uh, I said, she be, they are getting married and then they, they are married. Now, what about the husband? That's when she now started, we now start having this conversation about uh, the expectation. Apparently in Zimbabwe, they do 50-50. Husband and wife do 50-50. To be honest, I never knew that. Hmm. I never knew that because my experience is only limited to Nigerian men. So I don't know how it is in other African. But one thing I've noticed from going to Kenya is that Eastern African uh, people, they are very, very, um, they are women. Let me, the, the ones I had interaction with, a lot of them don't have, it's like they don't have a huge expectation. Nigerian women are very, very, like our, the average Nigerian woman has really high standard in terms of what they are expecting from their husband to do. And I'm talking about finances here. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the expectation that you need to be a provider. 
And so you find a lot of Nigerian men will work hard, really, really work hard because they know that it's normal. It's not even here. To be honest, I, I said to my friend, until I came to the abroad, and I kid you not, guys, you know I always like to keep it real. Until I came to the abroad, I never heard that word 50-50. I didn't even know what it means. And I got married in Nigeria. What is 50-50? I didn't know. And as I looking at it, uh, looking into it, they said uh, uh, is when you marry, you do 50%. And uh, your husband will do 50% in terms of finances. I say, ha ah, ah. I open my mouth, they look. I say, eh? Because this is not my experience. I don't know that it's possible to do that. Honestly, I never knew. So please, don't uh, ex excuse my ignorance in that area. Because this is not how I was raised. I never, I've never done 50-50 in my life. And, you know, so it's shocking to me. And then she now started telling me about, you know, her country, where she comes from, which is Zimbabwe the how marriage and relationship works <laughs> i'll open my mouth i was looking first of all let me give you a background of this i'll play the audio because we had a conversation unfortunately i wanted her to join me for the show but unfortunately she's sleeping so she couldn't join me but we recorded a short audio i'm going to play it's about 14 minutes i'll play it but before i play let me give you let me give you a background now the sister recently came abroad met a man and they got married and the sister that recently came is looking for money to go and pay for deposit for house. I say, ah. Why is she looking for money to pay for deposit for house? What about the husband? He said, ah, no. She has to bring her own. I said, bring where? Bring what's in? Bring what? I don't understand. Ah, that is, is the way they do it is 50-50. I said, you do 50-50 in Zimbabwe? Say yes. That the woman has to bring 50. That in very rare cases is when you now see a man that will say uh, 30 uh, you you do 30, me as a man will do 60. That Zimbabwean men, a lot of them are very stingy when it comes to money. And that it's almost like if you don't have any money to bring you to a relationship, you've got nothing to offer. I say, ah. Okay. Um, Obiangelu, let me see what you say. Obiangelu said, and to be even in the abroad, 50-50 only came into place a few years ago. Before then, men paid and women worked at home. Okay. Um, so I was looking at it. This is purely from an um, Lila Eats Reviews film said it's not about money. Uh, the context, the content of our character is important as well, and proper communication. Nigerian men are not communicators. Okay, that's a very big stereotype again that you are making. I don't know where you come from if you are married to a Nigerian man. Oh, how many Nigerian men you've been, been with? But that's a big uh, stereotype. Braben, thank you very much. Oh, uh -uh, see that massive super chat. God bless you. I don't know how many Nigerian men that you've been with, but from what I'm hearing, all those other men too from other places, they don't they don't provide. Okay? Let's pretend like money is not, is not important. You don't provide and you also cheat. So if you are cheating, you don't provide. And you are cheating. In my mind, I'm thinking, mm, okay, I don't know. Let me not go down that route. Afrotiza, thank you so much, Zante B. Thank you, Obodo Fam. We Nigerian men are learning from great content creators like you. We are improving, and by God's grace, we are going to treat women right in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Obodo Fam, please say amen to that prayer. And on top of that, I got forty nine ninety nine dollars. Ah. Now, wow, that's a huge super chat to Braben. God will bless you guys. Are you liking this video at all? The holy rant. The holy rant of Brother Ben. Okay. Temiti says she wants to hear from my Zimbabwean friend. Okay, I'm going to play it now. Let me stop rambling. Let's hear my conversation with my Zimbabwean friend about these things. Yes. Okay. Yes. We're talking about we're talking about um your country is you're from Zimbabwe mm -hmm. and we're talking about your men. You know, we started off by talking about 50-50. Yes. You said that um uh, in Zimbabwe, men and women do 50-50, like husband and wife, mm -hmm. when it comes to paying bills. Mm -hmm. So women have to pay half, and the man will pay half, like for rent, 
and yes. things like that. Yes. So 50-50. So let's say, for example, that they have rent. It's one five. They have to do 50-50. Um, or if, you know, your bills, you put your bills together and all your total expenses at the end of the day, you have to go 50-50. Unless maybe in a case where the man is earning more money, say, let's say the man is earning double mm -hmm. than the wife, mm -hmm. maybe the man can now say, okay, I'll do 60%. Then the wife will do 40%. So that is 40% of the total mm -hmm. expenses in the mm -hmm. household. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so is it not possible for the man to just like pay the rent or mortgage, pay the bills, and the woman will not pay? It's not possible. Like, is it rare to see things like that where men are providing financially for the family? It's very rare, very rare because... Men, and I'm not talking in the diaspora, I'm talking about Africa, in like Africa. in Zimbabwe, yeah. Yeah. So in Zimbabwe, because maybe of unemployment, mm. if it's the only the man that is working, mm. then yes, he's going to pay because the woman has no income. Right. Yes. But there there are certain things that the woman would have to do to it's sort of like you they you now have to compensate as a woman because you you're not paying anything financially you're not contributing anything to a table you're open to all sorts of things including abuse right yeah tell me the one of the socks you were telling me about how women will put socks in the microwave okay They'll put <laughs> I've never heard that they put socks. I'm learning here. I'm trying to learn. Please and uh, enlighten me. How do you put so you put the socks in the microwave for your husband? Yes. So, you know, especially in that scenario where your husband is taking care of you or, you know, they're paying the bills, whatever, mm. say you're not working. Mm. As a Zim woman, mm. you have to, you are obliged to take care of that man, to treat him like a king. Right. So some of the things you hear people saying, oh, yeah, you know, uh, I'll, I'll put socks in my in the microwave for my husband so that when he comes back from home, you know, his socks are warm, you know, it's going an extra mile, doing all... <laughs> How many of you have heard of the socks, this socks thing before? Because I'm hearing about it for the first time today. All of you married men, uh, married women out there, you better start putting socks in the microwave for your husband. <laughs> when he comes home, you better make sure his feet are warm. My friend told me that if the man, mm -hmm, you have to go extra mile. <laughs> you know, eh, what I actually realized today is that Nigerian women, we don't appreciate Nigerian men enough. <laughs> Honestly, this is, I'm not ashamed to say it. Honestly, I don't think we actually appreciate Nigerian men enough. Socks in the microwave. You put it in his feet to keep his feet warm. Ah, chideke. Ah, ah. I'm giving you guys tips, so how to make him feel like a queen. I never knew you can put socks in the microwave, oh. I learned something today. Okay, let's go on. His things to do you wash his, a man. You have to wash, do you wash his, do they wash his feet as well? Have you heard that one? Well, they wouldn't necessarily wash their feet, but you do anything. You just to wash just to make him feel like a king. To make him feel like a king, especially if he's the one providing like that. You don't have a job. Mm -hmm. You have to treat him like a king, like that. Mm -hmm. But in a case where both the man and the woman are working mm -hmm. in their marriage, the woman has to pay her fair share and the man her fair share. Is so it it's very rare that you will find, unless you know, like maybe traditional kind of people they still have that yeah the men can provide but most people now it's a case of 50 50. is it that the, culturally the men are not raised to know that the man is the provider like for a man i mean we're talking about um a scenario whereby a family member of yours you know was looking for money to pay for a house deposits even though she's married and i'm like mm. Why is a man getting married if he doesn't even have a place to put his wife? Mm -hmm. And it's his wife that will be running around now looking for money to go and pay for house deposit. And this person yeah. is new in the country. She doesn't, you know, she recently came and all that. I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Is it that the men are not raised to know that they are supposed to provide for their family? Like, 
you know, I'm doing, I'm saying this in comparison to Nigerian men because mm -hmm. I'm Nigerian and the way all my brothers were raised mm. is to, for them to be like, if you're the head of the home, it's not mm. being head in name only <laughs> financially. Uh -huh. You're the head. Uh -huh. Well, the thing is for most, yes, in, in, in men were raised, they were told that yeah, they are the main providers, they need to take care of the women. Uh -huh. However, I think there's been a cultural change or something. Uh -huh. I don't, I don't understand. Uh -huh. Men marry just because they are ready to marry. Uh -huh. They want maybe uh, someone to be taking care of them, to cook for them, uh -huh. to bear them children. Uh -huh. Not necessarily that they are ready financially. Right. Not necessarily that they have enough money uh -huh. to take care of the woman, uh -huh. to take care of the children. No, uh -huh. they marry because of many other differences. So. You will see most men in Zim, they will just say, okay, it's time for me to marry. They don't even have the finances to marry. Uh -huh. They don't even have a place to live. But they will go ahead and marry because to them what's important uh -huh. is to say, I'm a man now. So I can now take a wife. Uh -huh. and these are the things that I expect from a, from, a, from, a woman, from a woman. So I guess it's the definition of the masculinity there that is, is kind of fluid because how do you say you are a man when, I mean, you don't even have a place to stay and you want to marry? Okay, where would they stay? Would they stay with the in-laws or stay with... Yeah, they can stay with the in-laws. They can rent their own one room in someone else's house. Uh, they can, you know, it's for, it's it's not a financial thing for yeah. the men to say, okay, I'm ready financially. It's time yeah. for me to marry. Yeah. No, uh -huh. it's maybe, you know, they've come to an age. Age, yeah. Yes, and they uh -huh. want to marry. And most when most men marry, they will now say, okay, me and my partner or my wife will hustle together. Right. And we will grow together. Uh -huh. And we will build together. Uh -huh. So yes, in as much as there's pressure for a man to be financially stable, on the one hand, they know that they if they marry a partner, uh -huh. that partner is like a business <laughs> It's more like a business arrangement. As well, exactly. Uh -huh. But they yes. still expect, like you're telling me the case of this family member that the husband still expects fresh fufu and soup yes. every day. Yes. And soup. Mm -hmm. it, so mm -hmm. he will still expect that fresh fufu, soup and everything daily. Yes. And so, he doesn't think that he needs to do more as a man, you know, for him to end that respect. It's just because he's a man and he's the husband. Yes. So you will find even so many women because they say, oh, there's a shortage of men. Uh -huh. Some women in Zim are the ones that will actually take care of the men. Right. They Is there a shortage also... though? Is there a shortage? Is it eligible men we're talking about or just men? Just men. Any uh -huh. men in general, you can be a broke man and you can have three women. They want you. They will look after you. They will cook, cook, cook. hustle. They will hustle, buy food, cook for you. They will go, you pay, come to the house. They've cooked for you. Uh -huh. you know? Men are enjoying in Zimbabwe. Men ah! are enjoying ah! Ah! Men are enjoying ah! All these women will just be rushing you. Come, come, I've made food. Come, come. They'll be hustling to give them money and everything. Exactly. And you were saying you know? something that a lot of them are very stingy. That they can literally yes. buy you a chicken and yes. they expect that they're going to get laid on top of chicken. Yes. <laughs> I can't laugh. This one made me laugh. <laughs> My friend said, but not a chicken. If they take you out on one date, <laughs> like they are expecting to collect. If you don't put out, that's it. <laughs> no more freebies. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. So we are trying to help brothers today. I'm trying to praise my, I'm trying to stroke Nigeria men's ego today, Brabio. And I don't know whether you are seeing this. So please help me today because tomorrow might not be the same. Okay. My friend said, chicken, only one date. I'm like, you go to a bar in Nigeria. The way a Nigerian man announces presents is by sending expensive drinks, champagne to your table to say hello. Not even asking for your number. No, no jokes. I'm telling you. Before a Nigerian man can even say, can I have your number? They send money. Money is the language of the average Nigerian man. And Nigerian women understand this. So when she was telling me the story about the chicken, I was like, ah, now wow, these standards, they seem very low to me. Oh. Maybe uh, women from uh, Zimbabwe and all those parts of the world need to come and uh, 
let Nigerian women coach you how to raise your standards. No wonder when Nigerian men go to other parts of Africa, people, the men are always very, very jealous of them. Somebody said it in the comment section a while ago that in South Africa, Nigerian men are hated because they say, they come here, they take our women, they come here because they give your women money. You put, don't give your women money. You are busy doing 50-50. <laughs> Nigerian man will go from Nigeria and go to South Africa and take over. And be buying, all those girls will be buying them iPhone iPhone 15, buying them things they've never had their men provide. And I'm not saying that other parts of relationship, like somebody was saying, is not important, but we are talking finance. Let me tell you something. No matter how great the person is in every area, when they don't have a go, could it? And they cannot pay their own way at least that me, I have to go and be looking for money to rent house for you to marry me. Can marry? God forbid. I, I, please, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I can't. I was telling my friend, that I've never paid rent before in my life. I haven't as a married woman. That's on. For a, lot, a lot of Nigerian women can identify with it. I'm not saying that there are some Nigerian, some Nigerian women don't pay rent. But me, I have not paid before. I have not. Or mortgage, I have not. <laughs> I'm speaking from my experience and the experience of a lot of women that I know. So me, I'm not going to go and look for money to rent house. For you to marry me and put in the house, or because you bought me chicken. You want chicken? Chicken? <laughs> you bought me chicken and you want me to. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, like, seriously, jokes apart, women need to have more standards for themselves. Okay? Because from everything I've learned, it seems like Nigerian women in Nigeria and abroad too, our standard, no wonder some of our brothers are saying that they don't want Nigerian women again. Now, I like too much. Why not eat it, but you? Hey, Chineke. Okay, let me finish this, then I'll take calls. If a zim, there are some men that which are generally generous, yeah, but most of the zim men, mm. I'm saying stingy compared to other, like you were saying, Nigerian, like Nigerian men, men mm. you know, they will see a woman they like, they'll just spend money. Ha, you know, that is their language. Zim, no, for a zim, if a zim gives you money or takes you on a date and whatever, they're expecting something to happen there and there. That because they are not going to continue spending money on you and doing when they when they know when they, they, they when they don't know that you're going to be with them or you're going to love him or you you know so as a man is stingy in that aspect mm. like they will not just spend money on a woman mm -hmm. they, they're not lavish because, like that yes to just be giving money to girls like that because they like them yes. you have to put out once yes. i buy you one thing or uh, maybe just yes. take you out on a date one day. You were saying yes. after one date, if you don't yes. put out, that's exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. So a Zim man would say, well, if I am going to give, if I'm giving you this, how much, what are you going to give me back? That's sort wow. of the, the mentality. So it's like, it's very transactional then. It's very transactional. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. You cannot get something from a Zim man just for free or just, you know, if a Zim guy is pursuing you, like you were saying, an Nigerian man is pursuing you, he will buy you many different things, he will, you know, a Zim man will not do that. He, so, can, he can buy you things, yes, one, two times. Uh -huh. If you're not giving in, that's uh -huh. it. So Nigerian man will literally buy a car mm. for a girl that is asking out. Some buy houses uh -huh. for women that they're asking out. They're not married yet. Is uh -huh. that something that is rare, uh, rare for a Zim man? Very rare. A Zim man will not buy, buy you a house and a car unless you are now together together they know they are secure that this is my person they're not going anyway then yes if they have money if they are wealthy uh -huh. they will buy you a house or a car but if not a z man who is not going to buy and <laughs> just buy you a car and a house because they are pursuing you so you have way. to bring your share of the rent when you are married you bring it your yes. own he will bring his own Exactly. The expectation is that you have to bring everybody has to contribute his transaction. Everyone has to contribute. Uh, Unless if the man is say if the man says, Okay, I'll pay the whole of the rent, uh -huh. then you as a woman, you know you're going to cover all the bills. Uh -huh. Maybe you're going to buy the groceries for the household, uh -huh. you're going to buy clothes for the kids and all the ki things that the kids will need. Uh -huh. So in a way it's still 50-50 because so you yeah. have, as a wife, you have to be financially responsible and contribute to the family as well. And contribute to the family, yes. Uh, Unless you don't have a job, you're not working, then yes, the man is going to cover for everything. Uh, but you will feel it. You will feel yeah, you're saying, valuable. Yeah, you exactly. said it that women who don't work in Zimbabwe, yeah. they have no value. They don't really respect them. 
Exactly. Uh, and you're more prone to abuse, all uh, sorts of abuse, you know, because uh, you're not really contributing. Because bringing children, uh, carrying children nine uh, months, it's not, it's not a... It's not an achievement or like uh, something that you should be honored for, and, you know. Like, it's not. But, no, it's not something that pregnancy you know, and all that yeah, delivery, your yeah, body changing yeah. and everything. Men are grateful, but it's like you know because you're a woman, uh, it's the expected thing anyway. Uh -huh. So what would really bring value, uh -huh. obviously, is the financial aspect of things. Uh -huh. You know, and yeah. And so the more money you have as, as a woman, the more value you have to to the regular Zen man. Yeah, because you, you are bringing something to the table, and that uh -huh. something is <laughs> more financial. You know, at the end of the day, men will say, "Yeah, I just want a woman who's respectful. As long as you're respectful and you're not contributing anything." Uh -huh. But at the end of the day, uh -huh. if you are not bringing anything more to the table, so this more respect, this bringing something has to be fine. It has to be money. It, it it has to be money because at the end of the day, if a man is going to be paying for all those things, mm. it, it's like they're they will feel like okay they are struggling because remember most of the people in Zim or don't have jobs, well, well paying jobs mm -hmm. and all of that. So for mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. to be able to pay rent and to do everything for the household is like a big sacrifice. What about here? The ones that come here. So there are the, jobs here, there are opportunities yes. here, and I know that a lot of them, you yeah. know, do push themselves to be professionals, they are nurses, and, yeah. you know, work yeah. in healthcare and all that, social yeah. work and all that. Yeah. So mm. the ones that come here, mm. I think it's actually worse because then they say mm. the cost of living is high uh -huh. in in this in abroad is high compared to back home. Uh -huh. So in that way, they will definitely expect the wife uh -huh. to contribute more uh -huh. to the household. Uh -huh. So then that's where the 50-50 definitely applies. Uh -huh. But if you have a good man who's understanding, they earn more than you, uh -huh. then they can negotiate 60, 40, uh -huh. or 70, 30 percent. Uh -huh. But you cannot as a Z as a Zim woman or wife uh -huh. just chill and say oh, be doing yes, the man is going to pay for it. You can't be doing baby girl. You can't be doing baby care at all. That's well, not a thing. And the women know this, so they are prepared. The women know, so they are prepared. If mm. you are going to be with a Zimbabwean man, you know. Maybe there is a small amount that will say, yeah, I'll pay for everything. Don't worry, do baby girl. Uh -huh. But <laughs> most Zim couples that I know, uh -huh. it is a 50-50. If it's not 50-50, it's maybe you know the the woman still has to contribute uh, uh, so much towards the living expenses so that's how it is thank you thank mm -hmm. you so much okay that's my zim friend and sharing her own personal opinion here i see a lot of people in the comment section like uh, you need to talk to other zimbabwe couples or women to get another perspective this is not to put zimbabwe men down um i see a lot of people have been very defensive there this is not to put any any uh, tribe, um, anybody who is not Nigerian down. The point of this show is to tell you that I think that we Nigerian men, women, sometimes we don't appreciate Nigerian men enough. And I can raise my hand up today to say that because we are all about accountability, right? Yeah. So it's not to say that what the discussion that we have is for everybody that is from Zimbabwe or South African countries or East Africa. No, it doesn't represent, but she's sharing her own experience. Generally, this is the norm. Women pay their way in marriage. You have to pay, you have to pay 50, 50. So if you have a different opinion about that, or your experience is different, you are right. You're also right. Okay. Uh, so that's just it. Please give us a thumbs up. Uh, Elizabeth said, um, that's the reason why Zim ladies like to marry Nigerian men. I have three Zim women in my extended family here in the UK. Yeah. Nigerian men, uh, Niger Nigerian men marry, a lot of Nigerian men marry non-Nigerian women, African women that are non-Nigerians. Okay. And you know, remember one time we're having this conversation here. And somebody was telling us that how Nigerian men said that they don't like, some Nigerian men say they don't like Nigerian women. They prefer African women who are non-Nigerian. 
Okay. I'm beginning to see the picture clearly. Nigerian women, we get wahala. <laughs> Our standard, the average Nigerian woman standard is so, is so high. On a regular in Nigeria, I'm not even talking about abroad. Let's forget about diaspora. Go to Nigeria and see the way girls build boys. They build those men and they have to put out money. They expend, they splash a lot of money on girls. So, I mean, I'm just saying that, you know what, Nigerian men, today is your World Appreciation Day. We appreciate you, our brothers. <laughs> oh, my God. We appreciate you. Thank you, guys, for all that you do for us. Thank you for not making us do 50-50. Thank you for paying rent and mortgages and, you know, for not making us work like Jackie to be doing 50-50 because if you guys make us do 50-50, ah, umalak <laughs> barao. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yvette, you're enjoying. You're enjoying the talk. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay. Thank you to everybody that's giving me super chat. Yeah, I didn't have time to look at that while I was uh, playing the audio. I do appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now let's take calls. I'm sharing my link. Please, this is not a comparison. Today is the World Nigerian Men Appreciation Day. It is my opinion that Nigerian black men are the best black men in the world. Okay? You don't have to agree with me. This is my opinion. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Brabio is the first. Uh, no, actually, Honey Babe has been waiting. Let me take Honey Babe, then I'll come to uh, Brabio. Honey Babe, darling, welcome. How are you? Hello, Auntie B. Can you hear me okay? Yes, my darling. Did you watch the rant from Brother Ben? Of course I did. Of course I did, Auntie B. It was very interesting. Yeah. It was very, very interesting. Um, it, was, it was funny listening to him rant like It was that, funny. Wasn't? I've never seen him be so triggered. It was a different side of him that I've not seen. <laughs> you know the thing that made me like, the way his voice changed, the way he was ranting, his voice changed. <laughs> he was emotional. He was, was properly emotional. He was. He was really emotional. It's like he took it personally. It and is. what I found funny is like, he doesn't really speak in profanities, but I, like I said, I had to watch it twice. I'm like, is this brother Ben, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So, 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 so funny. Um, I've written some notes down because um, obviously I wanted to make a few points based on what you said and what Brother Ben said. And what I will, people need to be critical in the way they like listen to things. And what people need to understand is that your experience is not real, is not everybody else's experience. Um, I've been very candid with my past. I've had um my ex-husband was nigerian it was a very toxic relationship and when i was dating younger i've always dated nigerian men it wasn't intentional it just happened i've had bad experiences what i take it as i made bad choices and i think people need to understand is that you need to take accountability for making bad choices and you chose the wrong man you can't just brand a whole um country and say that all nigerian men are bad there are fantastic nigerian men out there and there are mongol parts that are nigerian as well we need to be, use critical thinking when we you know because i find it quite astounding that you yeah you know you have a bad experience i've had it but i still believe there's fantastic nigerian men out there so i think a lot of people need to take accountability for the poor choices you made that, that's that's where i that's where i'm coming from I mean, I've got the example of my brother. Um, he got engaged in December. He lives in the US. And his fiance said to my mom, I don't know if I mentioned it before, thank you for raising an amazing man. And the woman said that, um, his fiance said that he treats me like a queen. Now that's one example. It may not be, you know, everybody else's reality, but what I'm trying to make you understand is that your reality is not everyone else's reality. And I get really cheesed off that we tend to um, generalize men. Um, but the men mentioned that men cheat. It doesn't really matter what race you are. Men are men. You're gonna have crappy men. You're gonna have fantastic men. And sorry, I'm gonna say, cause I got cheesed off that Leah, whatever her name is, Mm -hmm. Your experience, I'm sorry to say, I, I am very sorry for your experience, but that is your reality. Right. Maybe the choices that you made 
She's here. Actually. Let me bring her in. Okay, no problem. In. Maybe the choice is that she made. Yeah. And that's the reason. But I've had, I've made bad choices. But yeah. I use, I made bad choices. I made bad choices with the men that I, that I was in relationships. They were all Nigerian men, by the way. But yeah. I don't have this um, analogy of all Nigerian men are bad. I don't think like that. Yeah. I have two boys, and I'm a, I am not going to be pessimistic in terms of Nigerian men because I am grooming my children my two boys to be fantastic nigerian men and right. i pray that they will be men that would treat their partners as queens and they will be fantastic nigerian men so if you want to think like that that's fine but i don't mm. want to think like that okay honey babe just hold, your, hold that thought let me bring no Layla. problem Layla is here unmute yourself please Layla. how are you hello auntie b hello hello Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Bra uh, Braben, hold on a minute. Yeah, Leila, where are you from? Oh, she's... I'm from Nigeria, actually. I was born in Nigeria. However, I was raised mostly in the United States. Right. Okay, so you're a Nigerian by origin? Yes, I am. Okay. Yes. So what's your take on what Honey Bay said in terms of you were saying some pretty harsh things about Nigerian men in the comment section? No, I wasn't saying harsh things. What I was saying mm -hmm. is I don't think that they're the best. And for you to, you stated NTB, I respect you, you know me. I mm -hmm. remember the day that you wished me happy birthday. I appreciated that. Mm -hmm. But what I am saying is they are not the best in terms of black men. Who, who's this the best is only in your based opinion? On my, this is only based on my experience. I'm not saying this as a generalization. So if you say they are not the best, I said they are the best, you said they are not the best. So to you, who are the best? No. I think that honestly, it depends on who you come across. I won't even say any black man will say, I wouldn't say any black man is the best. I just think it's based on whoever you come across. Then you have either a bad experience or a good experience. But right. to say Nigerian men are the best in terms of mm -hmm. black men, I don't yeah. agree. However, Nigerian men do have a lot of great qualities. I agree with that 100%. Okay. 100%. Mm -hmm. So all I'm saying, my point is to say that they're the best in terms of black men. Most of the men I dated were Nigerians. Right. Most of them. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like uh, the ca caller who just spoke. A yeah. lot of them, unfortunately, and to be, have been bad experiences. Right. However, recently, and I and I do admit to what she's saying that it has to be my choices. That if you choose people that are not accountable or they are not honest, that's you, because you're the one who are you're in control of your actions. Yeah, I agree with that. And you can also oh. I, I, the funny thing about it is that you see why we are talking of, of whether we are talking about it on a scale of a, a national level or individual level, you can also marry a white person that is a Mongo Park. Yeah, I agree 100 percent Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. But like I said, I wanted to be convinced that Nigerian men are the best. Right. I don't agree with that. Okay. Why don't I you don't. agree? Because I'm of your sure. experience? Mm -hmm. Because of it's your personal experience just, with the ones that you dated, it, or is there it, something it's not else? even just it's not even just that. It's based on people who I've known and talked to. Mm -hmm. You know, I most of my relatives are Nigerian, even though I'm mixed. You know, most of my, my relatives that I have contact with are Nigerian men, and though I see some great, like you said, they're great providers. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. That's not that's not that's not untrue, right? right. Mm -hmm. Um. They're highly educated. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Very true. Mm -hmm. But when it, I'm what I'm talking about when I say they're not the best, I'm speaking mm -hmm. mostly on character. Right. Character-wise, they're not. Mm -hmm. In what 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 do you I mean? mean? What do you say character-wise? Okay. In in what area okay. of their character did you see that there were flaws that is limited to only Nigerian men? Based on my experience, like mm -hmm. I said. A mm. lot of the times when I've talked to Nigerian men, right, when mm. it comes to honesty, they don't tell the truth. And mm. it's about things that it doesn't it doesn't make sense to lie about. And I'm yeah, wondering in my mind. Did you see the uh, Legion? Did you see Legion? He's not Nigerian. You know that, right? You are in no, America. No, no. So I'm sorry. I'm no. sure you saw the story, the pathological liar that we talked about a few days ago. NCB, this is, is based it? on my experience. Though. I know. I Nobody know else. No, no, I know. I know you're talking about your experience, but I'm just saying that, you know how um, you cannot use your experience to judge a, 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 a whole people because if you're talking about, we use that lies now, and I'm just speaking on that because lies, 
the kind of lies that we saw is on a, a scale that I have never seen before in my life. He's not Nigerian. Legion is African American. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to I'm I'm trying to say that you know because you have experience with you know one or two I don't know how many Nigerians you dated that lied or or your your friends or family people that have had experiences with people who they who they dated a Nigerian that lie. It's not that's not it's something that men do worldwide. They do it. Men lie. Not all it's men, more than but a lot of men lie. <laughs> it's more than that, actually. Okay. Auntie, can I so, can I interject when you finish? Sorry, I let you speak. So you you said it's not it's a general it's not just Nigerian men that lie. I agree with that. That's true. Yeah. Mm. But another thing is this. Okay. So you say that they're great providers, right? And some of them are great providers. But I personally have not seen in my, like, based on what I've observed thus far in my life, because like I said, both of my parents are half Nigerian, that they are great providers. And my father was not the breadwinner of our house. And like I said, it's not a generalization. It's not a generalization. So a lot of the times what I have seen are men who were just, you know, even though he took care of like, you know, certain things in the house, he didn't provide when it came to paying the mortgage. The was water bill. As a matter of was fact, he in Nigeria he, or he was abroad. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he left my mom. He left my mom who was who had early onset um dementia to go to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And not only that, he left with a bill. Mind you, mm -hmm. it was the cheapest bill to pay when it came to the household. And he just yeah. left. Yeah. No explanation. Mind you, we as his daughters, because he has three daughters, right? Mm -hmm. We as his daughters, still, to, when he was alive, he's, he's passed. God bless his soul. Mm -hmm. To this day, when, when he was alive, we would send him money. This is his money that he got from, I would say, from pension and everything. We would send him money, no matter how he's treated us. We gave him the respect that he needed, that he deserved, because of the fact that he was our father. Right. And this is based on our upbringing. Mm -hmm. You know, even the way um, my mom and dad uh, raised us in in this country, the United States, we didn't you we didn't use that as a like you know a way to tell him okay since you are like they say uh, not a good example of oh, a dad we're going to ignore you and not teach you well. sorry lila i'm so sorry about your experience with your dad but your dad does not represent nigerian men do you know that it's not just him it's not just him though can well, i say something else? can i say something auntie b my yeah. dad i've been very vocal on this show i don't know if this lady has listened to me before i've been mm -hmm. very vocal okay. regarding what my dad did and the fact that when I got married in 2014, he pissed off to Nigeria and left my mum with the mortgage. It was me as the eldest and my two other siblings that had to look after my mum. So everything you're saying, I've experienced. I've experienced very toxic relationship. But uh, unlike you, I am not going to tar all Nigerian men as full as rubbish. I'm, I believe there's I'm fantastic. Let me finish. You're Excuse me. Let me finish, please. And I'll let you uh, respond mouth. to what I said. Let me finish and you can respond to what I said, please. Based on what I'm saying to you is that your experience is your own reality. It it's doesn't okay. mean that every That's single right. Nigerian man mm -hmm. is bad. There's fantastic Nigerian men. I am grooming um, boys to be fantastic Nigerian men. So what you need to understand is my experience, your experience isn't reality to everybody else. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Thank you, honey, babe. Okay. But Lila, you're saying somebody said that, that I right. never said. Hold on. Somebody said that from, based off on the experience, you are projecting your pain on Nigerian No, men. I'm not. Because I'm not. Because I'm you are speaking from a place of not, pain, what your dad I, did. No, no. Yes, that has something to do with it. But I, what I am saying, which I'm not, I don't think is being heard. I said that mm. Nigerian men are not the best black men in terms of everything. They're not. Okay. It's not speaking from it's not speaking from pain. Trust me, I have met great recently in my life because of the fact that I made choices to not tolerate bad behavior, no matter who I come across. Mm -hmm. I have met a couple of Nigerian men who are actually very decent. 
Mm -hmm. One that I'm related to and one that I'm not related to, that I've known for a while. Mm -hmm. So when I speak of this, I'm not speaking purely out of pain. Yes, I have had pain. I'm not going to, I take accountability a lot. I'm not mm-hmm. going to deny that. I have had pain in my life. And mm-hmm. some of it has to do with Nigeria men. But to say that they're the best, I don't agree. But they're not all bad. Mm-hmm. A lot of great ones are there. I do agree with that. Mm-hmm. I agree. But they're mm-hmm. not the best. Okay. That's all I'm saying. All right. Thank you very much, Lila. That's, she said her own opinion. Her opinion. Miss, Miss uh, what's she called? Miss, Miss T.E.E. Miss T.E., I think you have a problem with me today. You're about to be blocked. Be very, very careful. Okay? When I'm we are here every day, when we are here every day talking about Mongo Park, talking about this, that you are there clapping. <laughs> today, I want to praise Nigerian men. You have a problem with it. What's your problem? Hmm? I've I'm allowed my life to speak. I didn't shut up. So what you, what's the problem exactly? I don't understand what your problem is. Okay? You have a I'm problem too- with it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Sorry, Auntie B. What I wanted to say is that I've been through the same experience, but it doesn't. I don't know. I refuse to be biased because I maybe I'm a maybe for me I'm very naive, but I still believe there's fun, there's great Nigerian guys out there. I've not allowed my experience with my dad, which I've told everybody. You know, I've been very vocal on this show and my past experiences, even my ex husband that was very toxic. But that was what I'm trying to say is choices. It's all about choices. I have been very hurt by my dad. I told you I'm still trying to mend the relationship with my dad, but it doesn't stop me from seeing the good in people. I don't want us to tar um, a whole culture of men, Nigerian men. There's good and bad in... I think there are people who have... They have have a problem with what I'm saying. That When I'm saying Nigerian men are the best men, why do you people have a problem with my personal opinion? Mm? Some people, people are just... They're angry that I said that. I'm going to say it over and over again. Nigerian men are the best black men in the entire world. Okay? I'm just, I think it's counterproductive that people are, you know, I'm, I don't know, people are now being very anti-Nigerian. And these are the same men and women that are raising Nigerian men. I don't you understand don't that. You agree with me. This is I don't understand opinion. that. It doesn't I make any sense whether to you me. agree or not. We are talking about people that we just if somebody gave an example of somebody that will buy you chicken, chicken. How much is chicken? And they expect you to put out. And you don't say anything wrong with that. So our standards are high. Our men, they try. They are not, I'm not saying that every Nigerian man is, is a good guy. We talk about Mongo Park here every day. Okay? We talk about them all the time. But I am talking, if you're looking across board, you want to look at it on a scale of percentage. Haba, come on now. Even the ones that is the brokers of the... Bro- and people are saying, oh, you're only talking about money. What can you do without money? Do hmm? you want somebody to come and marry you and put you in their mother's house? You'll be living with your mother-in-law. What can you do? We, we, sometimes women, we, we can be very, very funny. We go on and on and on and on. Then when it comes to money, but money, is, uh, it's not about finances. And uh, Nigerian men are providing but You want a man that doesn't provide? That want to put you on 50-50 in all, everything? Me, this is my own personal uh, belief about it. Okay? I'm not asking anybody to agree with me. All I'm saying is that I've never done 50-50 and I will never do 50-50. I say it all the time because if I'm doing 50-50, you got to do 50-50 when I'm pregnant. If I carry the baby for... For uh, maybe four, four and a half months, you will carry the baby for on that day of delivery. I will push for one hour, you will push for one hour. Then we can do 50 50. That's it, it's simple. It's my opinion. Okay, brother B, welcome. How are you, Auntie B? <laughs> brother, what B oh, brother B, welcome today. Oh I know you said you want to be supportive of Nigerian men and uh. We thank you very much for recognizing and supporting our brother, brother Ben, for applauding Nigerian men. So mm-hmm. as a Nigerian man myself, I'm proud of you guys today. Okay? Mm-hmm. And I hear you clearly. Nigerian mm-hmm. men are the best men in the world. However... Black, the best black men, no? Black men in the world, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> your your brothers, your brothers, eh, they don't they don't do something. So be saying some people don't even want here. They so bad, today they you go hear you go hear boost boost for some women, huh? Today. <laughs> wait, wait, 
see you now. Don't do my sisters where they make me the best one. I like this. <laughs> okay, okay. With that being said, with that being said, let me just address some few things. You know, inside house, both of us. You know, Nigerians to Nigerian. Okay. You know, and to be from our my own personal experience, mm. looking at viewing things from other African people. Okay. Yeah. Because by the grace of God, as an international student way back, I did attend school with people from other countries. Okay. Mm. Mm. So one of my early universities abroad, Zimbabwe, South Africa actually patronized that school so much uh -huh. that we had more of them than Nigerians even in that school. Uh -huh. So I'm laying this foundation for you to understand where I'm coming from now. So okay. one thing I noticed is this. The truth is Nigerian men, because we grew up from home, way back from home with the mindset and orientation that men are supposed to be provider. Uh -huh. so therefore that is why you will see us nigerian men back then even in school even a fellow student that they are giving the same money with you when you go out you want to pay for them they understand because you have that mindset that a man should be a provider okay uh -huh. so when we started going out you know as a young man we buy them shayo and everything in club and all those kind of stuff their men don't do that okay so yeah. their friends that i have that are their men they will tell me why are you buying them drink is it not the same money your parents gave you that they gave to these people to school mm -hmm. do you understand yeah so now later and i realized that because in that same country we have other nigerian people who are not really students that also come to club and they were opening tables and tabs for these foreign girls okay now because i was in the student level i was very close and i realized that these guys used to mock nigerian guys why this, they used to call us one name they would say they are the spenders so when they come to club mm. the nigerian man will pop all the champagne while right. their men we go with the women back to kerewa ah so they were yes that you people are mumu. yes so it ah. became a tradition so right. at the end of the day when they come to that gathering once they just enter their men don't come early once they see you you just speak you say you are nigerian you see the way they will gather you like flies mm -hmm. right when they gather you at the end of the day when it's 3 a.m in the morning when the team want to close you will hear them say aru aru that was when i hear aru so i don't ask the words aru they say aru mirono you understand so mm -hmm. Once one of them say Aru, the guy would uh, you see their guys by the door, they will start locating their girls. You will be like Mumu. So, with that being said, I just want you to understand that part, you know. Now, this is the mindset that mm -hmm. is being driven by their society. Mm -hmm. Initially, I was angry with it, but later I understood that yes, I personally prefer their own setup. I'm not going to lie to you, Auntie B. The reason is this why it is important and i know that a man that truly has money whether being a nigerian whether being a south african whether being a zimbabwean there's a level of money you will have trust me you will not even do 50 50 with your woman mm -hmm. it is natural law so i don't want to believe that every zimbabwean man or every non-nigerian man would do 50 50. it depends on the level of money they have the only thing that they would not do is this how can they they don't believe that me and you we are in this america mm -hmm. a man is making sixty thousand per annum the wife is making sixty thousand per annum and the man will carry all the bills what is the woman doing with her own money mm -hmm. auntie b I'm a man speaking to you here. Yeah. Let us be reasonable. We always say on this platform, every man has a mother. It's either you have a child or you have a mother, or a daughter or a mother. Mm -hmm. Every woman has either a son or husband. So when we talk, 
we should always look at it from a general perspective. Mm -hmm. So I would not accept it mm -hmm. myself that, as a man mm -hmm. that that is why the lady you spoke with from Zimbabwe, please, my regards to her. Mm -hmm. She gave a clear analysis. Of mm -hmm. course, yes, it is her own view, mm -hmm. but even what she said, I totally agree and it makes me even love them the more. Mm -hmm. Because if I heard her clearly before I went in to take a call, mm -hmm. she said that in their own environment, mm -hmm. if the man is any more, he will bring more. Mm -hmm. I heard her say that. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was what she said. Mm -hmm. She said she will, it will bring more. And really, that is what applies. Because you cannot put a woman at home, for instance, who is not working and you will not provide everything. You have to provide everything. And two, if a woman is working, directly Bro, or indirectly, Bro, the uh, hard job... Bill, we are not even talking about the diaspora here. It's Africa yes. we are talking about. Too, like okay, now. okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Yes, and okay. All the examples we gave there when I was talking to my friend is yes. back home, not here. Yes. Because we yes, know that the dynamics of relationship is different here. Yes. Uh -huh. The same thing. That's what uh -huh. I'm saying. So, so uh -huh. even in that country, for instance, uh -huh. if a man in Nigeria is married to a woman that is a banker, for instance, who leaves home 7 a.m. in the morning and comes 7 p.m. in the evening, right? And this man is living with this woman directly or indirectly most of the house job the man will also support is the truth because he cannot escape it naturally do you understand so therefore once you are supporting with that house job then definitely the woman from that money is still making will still support some part with the home so it's a give and take situation however it is not good, in my opinion, back in Africa, that the mentality that our men had, even me, I'm not excluding myself, Auntie B, the mentality I'm a man, speaking from a man perspective now, mm -hmm. there is no man, our mentality of a Nigerian man is provide and then you can become, you can abuse a woman. That is the truth. Mm -hmm. It might not necessarily be called direct abuse because when somebody is providing 100 percent again this is not absolute but we are taking of most cases in most cases it is almost impossible or difficult to find a man who will provide 100 percent for your financial need and you will not lawyer they never bond that woman is the truth and when i mean lawyer i'm not talking of lawyer normal lawyer you know when a nigerian man say call the word lawyer you have to be scared you have to check where your dictionary three times in chinese in spain and in uh, arabic what lawyer mean because this is the reason why in africa you will see that all the man will be saying when you are discussing marital issue would be eh, and they provide everything what should they do yeah do you understand my point so the mentality of that providing why it is always good also comes with its negative feedback that is the truth of the matter so Nigeria finally I, yeah finally okay. i end with this one auntie b mm -hmm. finally i end with this one too mm -hmm. the average nigerian man mm -hmm. me i know that we are very driven by kirewa Mm -hmm. so most of our nigerian women fail to understand that there's a difference between when a man is looking for your cookie than when a man is marrying you what about giving the cookie out free of charge over chicken Inyanka? what about no that i'm not like i said again on both sides okay mm -hmm. so now then two uh, finally I, I was renting on that point before you caught me anyway so to rest on that point mm -hmm. our women are the best women I've ever seen in this life. The reason is this. Even upon all this talk, what would they talk for a year? It's but just because... Be another one, no? <laughs> wait now. It's just because women, and Nigerian women, are really not the type that like to bring their husbands out to say they are doing this and that for their husband. I can tell you, if I were to take a bet today, 
that on this forum i'm speaking right here today eh you will hardly find a nigerian woman here listening to the voice my voice today who will say they don't support nigerian women always support their husbands financially just that we don't make it very clear you know like the way others people we do and say do it do it do it when people are in marriage where there is true love and everything whether you say it or you don't even ask for it directly the true situation of your finances will come into play and when that is done commingling would always take place where both of you must commingle your finances and your housework so they okay. go together you cannot escape it on tradition mm. in the west for instance women parents are they pay for the white wedding that is the tradition in the western culture so many people don't know the secret indians they give the woman a uh, bad the list of things to bring for marriage so it is just the nigerian thing that we always have a man to carry everything on top of his head which is again that is our own way and we are not against it but we are just saying that while that is good it comes also with its negative actions so that's my little contribution on this matter thank you brother ben I appreciate you standing for nigerian men we are the best black men on earth and thank you auntie b hey brother b thank you thank you very much I appreciate you, my brother. God bless you. See, eh, what you so many women are angry in the comment section. I don't know why you are so angry today. Nobody will agree say mama soup no sweet for this world. Every child you ask, they will tell you their mother soup is the sweetest soup in this world. Even if some a stranger can come and eat the soup and say, hey, you it's salty, this soup no sweet, you know. But to that child, it's the best soup in this world. Okay. So I don't know why people are angry because I say Nigerian men are the best black men. I that is my belief. I stand on it. You know why? Because I know Nigerian men that go above and beyond, you know, for their wives, their partners, their home. It is not even about let's even remove money from it. It is understanding their role in the home. Like uh, Lynn said, the average Nigerian woman don't want to do 50-50. Is it to say that there are no Nigerian women that pay rent or pay mortgages? There, of course there are. Do you understand? But it's about understanding your role. It's, it's from the culture. Let me go, let me go that route. It's the culture. When my friend and I were speaking, what I, I picked up is that the culture in Zimbabwe and the culture in Nigeria is different. Our culture is different. So culturally, the way Nigerian men were raised, and I'm not saying that there are no Mongo Park. In fact, there are plenty of Mongo Parks everywhere. We talk about Nigerian Mongo Park here quite a lot. But culturally, the way the good Nigerian man is raised and their relationship to their wife in terms of taking that responsibility, that role as, a, as the leader, as the head of the family, I've not seen it in any other black race, uh, black uh, group. I'm sorry, I haven't. Mandy Love, I'm so sorry about your experience. Uh, honestly, I'm sorry. You said that you had a Mongo Park father, um, your father, and even your the person that you were with is Mongo Park. I'm really, really sorry. I hope you get, you know, healed and, you know, but don't write Nigerian mail. Mandy Love said, if not that, <laughs> she said that, if not that, other, other African, is the other African men are scared of Nigerian women. <laughs> Pretty love. I didn't know that. Oh. The truth is that Nigerian women have very high expectation. Our standards are very, very high. Okay? And I'm not saying that women from other backgrounds don't have... But it's not across board. Go and see small girl in Nigeria. Very small girl. She's not even finished school. She doesn't even have money. And I'm not even talking about, you know, women that are, you know, working professional women here that will be telling you that, you know... I'm not doing struggle love. Small, small girls in Nigeria, they already have standards. They will tell you, I can't date a man that doesn't have a car. I can't date a man that did it. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Brother Dollar, welcome. Uh, I'm coming to you in a minute. Let me take, is it Shoe Park? 
Let me take Shupak first. Hello. Welcome. Please, please unmute yourself. Where are you joining us from? Hi. Hello. Hi. I just thought I'd um, make a comment on what I saw. And I agree, like, um, oh, I think that Nigerian men are great, but I don't think that they're the best. Okay. And um, and that's because, like, if, well, if it's, if it's comparing them to marriage, I think maybe they could be at the top of the list, maybe top three. Okay. But then there's, like, um, but then I look at, like, economically, the country and the poverty rate and the Naira is, like, very low. So I don't understand how they could be the best when um, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of them moving to other countries for better opportunities. What has that got to do with what has that got to do with anything? Moving to other countries. What has that got to do with anything? People because when men are when men are great, they stay in their country. They don't no, leave abroad, no, and then they don't no, drop no. and divorce and do marriage fraud. No, 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 no. That's what about Elon Musk? He's a African. He lives in America. That doesn't even make sense. What you just said. That's it. Completely irrelevant point. We are talking about no. It's not. It's all part women. of it. It's all part of character. So if you are successful, you, if you are good, like the way I'm saying, they are good. They shouldn't be traveling abroad. Well, no. You're if if if, if Nigerian men are great, then they should be in their countries, and um, the di the dollar is way better. So American men are the best because that's where the wealth is. And if you're talking about Nigerians being wealthy and taking care of their families, the dollar rate is so did low; I it's say, like seventeen cents to the say, dollar. When did I say Nigerians? When did so I that's talk not about true. Wealth? When did I talk about so wealth? Are we, well, your whole conversation has been about Nigerian men taking care of their families and their yeah. wives and stuff. Yes. Right. They're so if you're dollars. comparing them on a national, but if you're comparing them globally, they're not actually the best. They actually have a high rate of poverty. Who is the country. highest richest man in the world? Since you want to talk finance, let's talk finance. Who oh, is the highest let's richest say, man let me, in the world? Let, let's black man. The point. No, 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 no. You want to talk money? Let's but, talk money. Who is the richest oh, black man? In a second. Okay. Do you want to? I don't want you to control what I'm saying. I no, want no, us to no, have no, a fair, transparent conversation. No, you're not having a conversation. You're no, I'm having a pair, a transparent conversation with you, and you're it's cutting not. me off trying to control. No, this. no, I'm asking you. Okay, a they're not the I'm best because the, the, because the country is poor and it's, it's poorly run. So Nigerian cannot run anything. Oh really? No, that's true. Really I'm to be let's tell her to leave. I'm Nigerian men are coming to, mean, to yes. white countries to survive. Really? And you are there, born there. You still you are not surviving. So what do you have to say? They come here and they and they do better than you that is talking, not you that is talking. If you're talking about moving in, in immigration, Nigerian men are going abroad. They still get better jobs than you. They are better educated than you. So what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You are very, very del delusional. I don't know what you're talking about. Please. Okay, I can't get you because you're just here to throw shade and I'm not having it. This is my show, all right? Bye. Okay, Brother Dollar, welcome. Hmm. But I don't oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. You see, uh, thank you, uh, my sister. Well, uh, may God bless you a lot. Uh, I'm very pissed at that lady that just came in. You know, some of these people are like these black Americans who hate Nigerians. You understand? Know, no. They call them. They call them FBA. So let's yes, um, let's not go that route. We are talking okay. of relationships. Yeah. yeah. See, brother, like, I don't want us to play to that narrative because this uh, is what let us be honest. Let us be uh, honest. Uh, Nigerian uh, men are the best black men in the world. That uh, is the truth. I think what that, that thing is truth. really paining people that I said it. Why? Yes, you know what? You know what is paining them? Some of them might be have their own thing. Look, we have emotions. Nigerian men are very emotional people, also. Mm -hmm. But what you will not take is when you start disrespecting us slowly. They will, we ask you to stop. Then you refuse to stop. Your mouth is bigger. We don't take that. That one thing they don't understand about us as Nigerian men. Oh, we can show emotions. Like, we can show love. We can yeah. show everything. We can take responsibility of everything. But, but Ben, are you study to allow? You don't have to record that level. You see what you brought. Now you, you, you no, no, that's me. But Nigerian men are like they are very proud people. <laughs> no, you what I, mean? I don't understand is that that person came here with her shaking voice and she's no, that is a, that is a, forget that's a loser. We understand this are this. Uh, you say people, now, why are men? Why are we moving? Why are Nigerian? If Nigeria yes, is there, yes, why it's, are we moving uh, abroad? See, now, now this I don't want to mention their name, you know. But now this for the other side, 
we okay. know what they feel. Mm -hmm. You understand me? We know what they feel. Sometimes the expectation, some of them have might be, uh, they think they can use. Look, Nigeria, if Nigeria man is cleaning your feet, buying everything, doesn't mean that he's a fool. We, 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 when we're in love, we show love. We show all what we got. Nigeria man is very direct. Only we started disrespecting him slowly. Or, or you started want to kind of like belittle him, like because there are some women. Let's not be honest, who want to prove they know more than the men. That's when Nigerian man will be very quiet and be looking at you. Yeah. Nigerian man will never forgive the evil, the little thing you do, you you did against him. He will never forgive you. Really? If you attempt to go, he will go. You understand me? So Nigerian man know how to keep things something in his mind. Especially if you continue doing it continuously, so we show our love. We show our emotions. Somebody and did a whole movement. video. Hold on, brother uh, Dollar. Somebody did a whole video bashing Nigerian men, using the video as an example. Before you come here to come and say anything, keep that in mind. Did a whole one-hour video bashing Nigerian men, how Nigerian men are this, how Nigerian men are that. And I came here to do a reaction to, you know, a video that our brother Ben did to say that Nigerian men are the best black men in the world. And you people are triggered. You're upset. Why are you upset? Why are you upset? If you say your men, if you say that my people are not good, and I'm saying my my brothers are the best, why is your penny you? Why? I don't understand. Why, uh, uh, yeah, uh, why are you why are you upset? Why is it triggering the, you? <laughs> I don't some of them that are in this uh some of look, most Nigeria women Nigeria may say gravitate towards Nigeria women. Let's just be honest. It's only a few of us that marry foreigners. Let's just be honest. Majority of Nigerian men are still with Nigeria. I gravitate towards Nigeria women. One, we love the way our women ginger out sometimes. That's just the truth. Nigeria women are they are sharp. They can really ginger you. You understand me? They can praise you. You understand me? So 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 it's not like Oh, we're living uh, like oh, Nigerian men are living their women. It's still lie. Ninety percent, even ninety-five, ninety-seven percent of Nigerian men will marry a Nigerian woman. Straight up, that's just the truth. The few Nigerian men which I'm involving that marry to foreign people, yes, some of these foreign people appreciate us because we can turn a very useless woman being to be somebody else in society. Yeah, I, don't, I don't even care who you marry. Marry who uh, that's that, that's a Nigerian man for matter. you. At the some of these people, right? If, if you see some of these foreigners who praise us, not just about the money alone, we can turn person who want to be useless in life. We can turn that foreign person to be very purposely person in life. You understand me? Right from the time we take a, I love this girl. What are you doing? What do you see yourself five years from now? So, we can turn this around. You understand me? It's not about the financial aspect alone. We have the ability to to encourage you. Because we have confidence. We know ourselves. We know the way we move and we know what we want. Our women are also like that. You understand me? So, so, so some of these foreign women that experience Nigerian men, not just about the financial aspect of it alone, it's about what do you want to be? You understand? Because we have a very high expectation for ourselves. We have self discipline. We accept our fault and wake up from that. So, mm -hmm. so, so some of these uh, women have very low standard of, look, they say well, our eye too tear. We know too much. Some of this, some of them, their way of thinking, they're very, very, you know, not as well would they think. So we feel from there, ginger them up. So, okay, let's see what you can become. Let's, let's see what you can achieve five years from now. You understand me? And if if Nigeria man really love you, it will do everything for you. It will encourage you, it will ginger you, it will it will do a lot for you to, you know, to, not to stand up for yourself. You understand me? So it's not, but yes, if we have money, we spend. If we don't have money a lot also, we can also do other things also like encouragement. We, our, our mentality, our standard is strong. Only one thing that we will not tolerate is don't disrespect us. Don't okay. take us as a fool. Don't stop bad biting us from anywhere. You know what I mean? Nigerian man will never... You might think, oh, I'm saying it. Maybe if, uh, this guy forget about it. Nigerian man will always keep it years from now. If you have any opportunity, it will leave you. That's just the truth. You say, man... I beg this person not fit. Once it takes somebody else that can show that respect towards him, you are good. That the other relationship is done, it's scattered, it's gone. Nigeria man will move on. You understand me? So we we show love. We're not bad people. Okay. Yeah.
Thank you very much, brother. Uh, Allah, I think uh, I'm going to round up very soon because, like, joke, joke, we've done two hours. I can't believe we've done two hours. Thank you so much. I understand you. But, uh, Rabio said, they are judging Nigerian men who are looking for green cards. Mm -hmm. You two that is going to Nigeria to go and look for a small boy, a boy that is old and is young enough to be your grand, 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 grandson. What? Is it not transactional? You see, eh, people, eh, especially women, we can be so hypocritical. You will see a boy that is young enough. All this boy today that go to Nigeria, is it not a transactional relationship? You two, what do you think it was going to be? So they are looking for a green card. So because of that, you judge them because you two, what were you looking for? Are you not looking for something? You know you are looking for something. I beg. Make, make, make when I go sleep, Jari. Everybody knows what they are looking for. Everybody is looking for something. So when the play, you are playing a game, and if you get played, that's on you. You know what you are looking for. So it's not even about green card or no green card. I didn't even bring the issue of green card inside. I didn't bring it in, inside. I didn't even talk about, I wasn't even talking about Africa. I wasn't even talking about the diaspora. So what's my business with your green card? Is green card card to heaven? Some of some people have green card. You didn't. They, they don't use it for anything. Kowulo is not useful to, to them in any way. So what's that? I beg. Ah, uh, brother Ben, welcome, Jari. Thank you, thank you, Auntie B. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Auntie B. Thank you, Budu Farm. Thank you, everybody. Uh, mm. First of all, I want to appreciate you, Auntie B, for at least. Um, doing me the favor to review that video. I did not expect that you're going to do a show on it. It made um, me laugh, honestly. <laughs> it was so funny. The way you rant. You know, I've never seen you rant before. <laughs> this broke code, uh, you're not joking. Now, you put me in trouble now because I'm defending brothers now. And my <laughs> and, and a lot of women who are who usually here, they don't like it. They are coming from me. Really coming I'm from so, me. But I'm you know, so sorry, I'm a very soft woman, no? You come for me, I will come for you. Me, I know they run. Who you be? Oh. I'm so sorry for that, Auntie B. Please, um, no, no, everybody, no, just okay. put it on me. You don't please. need to be sorry. It's yeah. okay. Ufu Grant. Because after I posted the video, I actually uh, sent it to Auntie B. I just wanted her to review the video for me as uh, at least somebody who has a lot of experience in content creation. And because the topic is a kind of uh, controversial one, so I wanted to get my mind prepared for what is coming for me because i know some people will really come for me for what i said so thank you auntie b for your expert opinion and for always doing what you do and um, having said that i want to apologize to all our black sisters american black sisters all over the world and my african sister uh if you get to watch that video and uh, you are on this show right now and it seems like we are having you know, some kind of back and forth please um just understand that we are learning and if we don't discuss some of these issues there is no way we can improve i, I think the thing that i'm saying that the people a lot of people who are calling don't like and the comment section why they are so angry is because i said nigerian men are the best black <laughs> men in the world <laughs> that statement but i've always said that though it's not today how many of you yeah. have heard me say that i've always said that and i maintain yeah. it i have a nigerian man i have nigerian sons Miko, i want to you, say your, your mama soup sweep out my soup my mama soup are you uh, who you be I beg you, we can't. We'll go fight but when we come outside there, eh, I defend my own two four seven. Yeah, and to be honest, and to be, I think you are one of the two content creators that I've seen that actually called Nigerian men out a lot for some of the BS. I do. That I with my full so, chest. Yeah, and. I don't see it in the negative way because we have the opportunity to learn. And I'm going to be honest here now. The first time uh, my sister, Sister Diamond, uh, introduced me to Budu Farm, the first show I listened to, I was like, which kind of woman be this? Is it the way this woman, they tear Nigerian men apart? You know? Then I'm like, okay, let me just calm down. And Nigerian men don't even like me. That's the funny thing. A lot of them don't even like me because they see me as always being on their case. <laughs> yeah, you see, like, uh, and I'm just gonna defend them today. Now, should, should I then, <laughs> by the time I watch like three shows and I listen to many of our beautiful sisters here, uh, people describing their experiences with Nigerian men, who, how they have been treated in Nigeria, and how they have been treated here and abroad, then I start realizing that men 
this woman is actually doing a great job. Oh. At least you create a platform for people to express themselves. There are a lot of people who are depressed right now because they don't have anyone to talk to based on what they are going through. So yeah, I just wanted to say that to say, Auntie B, you are doing a fantastic job. And God will continue to protect and watch over you in Jesus' name. Amen. Brother Ben, I don't have any problem. The thing I have a problem with, people still don't understand it. What I have a problem with is abuse of any kind. Yeah. That's what I have a problem with. Yeah. So, if you feel like, a lot of men feel like I'm always coming for Nigerian men. I, I'm coming for Nigerian men because we, the stories we share here mostly relating to Nigeria, right? But, yes. It's the, that, that, that's not the case. Is the the things that, and it's always issue specific, right? You exactly. did this to this person. Oh, one woman is by. What do you expect me to be doing to be jumping? Eh? I'm not going to be jumping now. Because, you know, no matter how good you, everybody, we can, we can be better. No matter how good you are, you can be better. Mm -hmm. And if you're already better, you can be the best. So it's learning and unlearning. Exactly, man. Exactly, man. So on, um, regarding the topic you have today and the video that I did, what actually pissed me off was that lady's uh, uh, content. I was just trying to look for, okay, what am I going to do? Because I know the restriction on my channel is coming to an end and the views are going to start They put a restriction on your channel. Oh, my channel has been on restriction for like six months now. What did you do? What did you do? <laughs> I I posted one shot too. So I don't even know. It was one Indian guy. He was sexualizing a lady in that. And then I posted that the next thing. YouTube just <laughs> give me community mm. strike. And uh, after that, mm. I've been dealing with that this way. So now that the, the restriction period is coming to an end, the views are beginning to come back. So I'm like, okay, let me just be serious for one in my life and do some content. And as I was browsing YouTube, boom i saw that video it came up i think the lady's name uh the channel maybe paris morgan or something and the way she was tearing nigeria men down she was using davido as an example uh saying davido impregnated the girl in america the guy do this do that he was i was just like wait a minute what is the, this guy the same Anita that turned out to be a fraud exactly man so I'm like, what is she talking about? And she just go on dragging Nigeria men up and down, up and down. So I said, you know what? Maybe it's time we start speaking out because basically I avoid topics like that. I don't even create any content along that line. I'm just like, yeah. you know what? I don't want to go back and forth with my black American sisters or brothers. Let me just, but I think if people are out there bringing us down without really knowing who we are, without understanding our background and culture, then it's time for us to speak up. So that's why I did that video. And I just use, basically use the point she was emphasizing to drag us to set it straight. You know, what? that's why I spoke so, about- So Anita that was Amen. lying is a case, is a case study. I wonder- Anita and the video was a case study. I wonder, my sister, I wonder- Why did she use Nick Cannon? Yeah. Since she's looking for Americans are behaving badly. <laughs> How many baby mama does Nick Cannon have again? Since we are looking for men with many baby daddies, if it's celebrities we want to use now to represent a, a country where you have over 200 million people, most of who are men. Exactly, man. Exactly. And the, the other funny part is this. I live in America. I've been here for going 11 years now. And I work with Black American ladies. I work with American Black American men. I go to school with them. I live around them. And to be, to be honest with you, if you are around Black American sisters, if you hear their story, you will understand that these are actually nice people. Some of them are beautiful and nice inside and out. It's just how they were treated that they are reacting to. So, and a lot of these good ones who actually understand what life is all about, they are not on the internet dragging people. It is the ones that make I not even talk. Now those mm -hmm. ones say they get issue. Now then they day on the internet just running their mouth. Now bad things they always uh, trend now. Good things know they trend. It's mm -hmm. exactly anti B. Mm. I work with a lot of black American ladies, and even I told some of our Nigerian men here that look. I think when you're having anything to do with black American ladies, you need to find time to listen to her story. 
Mm-hmm. They don't just react like that. They are reacting based on their past experiences. And they are wonderful people. In fact, right now in my class, I'm, 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 I'm in school now. In a 30 people class, I'm the only man in the class. And uh, one other Nigerian lady and one, uh, I think that lady is from uh, Togo or Uganda. That's just three of us Africans in that class. The rest of them are African-American and Uyibo ladies. And these ladies, if you see the way they are even helping me, immediately I was I, I introduced myself, I let them know, hey, I'm married, I got three kids, blah, blah, blah. And they were like, oh, you married? You got, I'm, yeah, I'm married, I have kids. I don't know, maybe that actually appealed to them that, like, okay, be like, say this guy had caress more. If, I, if I'm strongly with some of the assignment, if I ask them, they will help me out with it, you know? When it is Sunday, we have to turn the assignment. Some of them we even text me and say, Ben, have you done this? Have you done that? So these ladies, they are nice people. But those ones on the internet always dragging Nigerians, they are the worst of anti B. And they Bill, don't Bill, Bill, I don't understand what you are saying, Bill, that uh, uh, I should have allowed that person to be talking. I should have allowed her to be saying, well, what she's saying that I should have allowed her to be talking. She came here and basically started saying that uh, what is the value of Naira? That uh, if uh, Nigeria was good, why, why, why are people going abroad? Dollar. She started talking about dollar. What has dollar and Naira got to, anything to do? We don't, we don't know our issues. I don't understand. If That's you are it. saying that, you know, African-American women have had bad experiences or let's just say American women have had bad experiences with Nigerian men, which, you know, maybe is correct. Depends on who you are talking to. Have they not had bad experiences with American men? That's my question. Hmm? Have they not had bad experiences with Afri- uh, uh, American men? Or are you telling me that all their relationships are they are just hunky dory? They are happy. Um, no, uh, you... no, no marriage breakup. No issues. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you see, Auntie B, the thing is that um, some of our black american sisters um some of them have not traveled and they have not really had uh, much experience with africans in general and nigerians mm-hmm. in particular they only go off based on what they saw on tiktok and um, uh, other social media platform and like you rightly said ma bad news travel faster all they see is oh nigeria man do this to his wife nigeria man do that to his wife like you know and then they just go off on that and just like brabio pointed out earlier on a lot of these, my sweet black American sisters, their own experience is with Nigerians who are looking for papers. And mm-hmm. when you deal with Nigerians who are looking for paper, that is transactional relationship. You mm-hmm. know, they are trying to get as much as they come from, from the guy. And the guy is also finding a way to use them. So I think they just go off on the basis of that and say, oh, all Nigerians, this is how they behave. This is what they do. And I actually clarified that in my video too, okay? So please, if you're listening, we are not like in competition with black Americans or anything. We are brothers and sisters. I have a colleague of mine. We used to work together until she finished her uh, MP and she left me. (laughs) She left me on the unit. Very sweet lady in fact the way she behaved one day i start telling her that have you done your accessory you are behaving like a nigerian <laughs> Man, let's, let's, let's run up jerry we've done two hours i didn't go church tomorrow I know. so mm. basically please this is not an argument between black american and, and nigerians all i was saying is that nigerian men are good we take care of our business and don't use just a couple of people you see online to judge all of us. And because of this generalization, a lot of black American ladies are missing out on dating good men. And if you look at the top content creators like Kendra, like many of these top celebrities, black top celebrities, they are actually looking for Nigerian men up and down. Like, because they know what they're going to get. So please, I apologize. And please don't insult Auntie B because of this. We just have to do no, stuff no, like this. No, no, anybody. Too. Anybody will insult me, I insult them back. Now, my mouth, they pay me. <laughs> <laughs> now, maybe the moderator of the show. Now, me get Mike. If you insult me, I go insult your entire generation. I don't fear anybody. Wow. Go, Auntie B. Oh, I beg you. No, beg anybody. Uh, uh, don't and beg Auntie anybody, B, Auntie. Don't beg anybody. Come for me and see whether I will not come for you. Who are, who, who, he? I better go. See, be, please, if, if you don't, don't get if you don't get liver, that man, you cannot even stand on YouTube and be doing this. 
because there will always be all these rats on online that will come for you one way or the other. Today is women that are coming for me. It's mostly men. <laughs> <laughs> How can you win? <laughs> Money, babe, you cannot win. No, if you don't have, if you are not tough, eh? no, you cannot be on the streets. It's true. The funny thing, and the funny thing, Auntie B, is that. I keep saying this and it's like people, I don't know, they need to educate themselves. The fact that you have a bad experience with a Nigerian I man doesn't mean that it's is reality for other people. I told you, I told you that my father was a proper Mongol pack. I'm the one that even told my mom to even divorce my dad. So why am I not thinking the way that these ladies are thinking? Because I have critical thinking. The fact that you've had a really bad role model as a dad or the fact that um, I've had really bad relationships, even my ex-husband. I don't think the way these women are thinking, and most of them, not just respect, they have trauma. And maybe they need to get therapy or counselling. Because for you to now generalise a whole, what is it, 200 million? And maybe what? I don't know. 80 to 100 are men, or maybe what, more? Just because you dated maybe 10 men. It doesn't even correlate. It doesn't correlate at all. So I think many women need to stop this, this generalization. Own up to the bad choices that you've made. The same way that me, as I'm supposed to be the accountability prefect, I own up to the bad choices I made. I own up to the fact that I married my ex-husband who was an asshole. I own it with my full chest. Do the same thing and shut the hell up and stop disparaging Nigerian men. It's really frustrating hearing nonsense from the comment section. Uh, from the comment section. Own your bad choices and shut the hell up, please. Um, Auntie B, thank you, <laughs> honey, babe. Honey, babe please honey. take it easy, my sister. Honey, babe, don't uh. And the people that are just joining the show that don't even know how this show started, they now they are coming from me saying that I'm comparing Nigerian men to other men, African American men. I never did. We are reacting to somebody that is bashing Nigerian men. You pussy don't get it. And the fact that I spoke about Zim men, that was based off on the experience of my friend who is from Zimbabwe talking about their own community. Who am I to argue with somebody telling me about their country? Yeah. Have I been to Zimbabwe be... before? Do I know their men? No, I don't. So what are you guys talking be... about? You just I jump just... on the show. You don't even know the beginning. You just come here. And you know the funny thing? You don't... The, the, the point is that uh, the people that always come to defend their... Uh, you come to defend... You come to defend now. You come to say, "Oh, my country, my country, my men, my men." You don't even like your like your people. You don't. Exactly. That's why I don't play all these silly games. I don't exactly. play them. <laughs> mm. And to be please, um, as I'm rounding up now, I just wanted to beg you, continue to do what you are doing because I I like to use myself as an example so that I won't generalize. Me personally, I learned so much from this platform and i learned from a lot of my sisters and brothers here every time i learn in fact i'm improving and like i said nigerian men are improving and if we don't have people like you and all these sisters trying to let us understand that hey if you are in nigeria it's different from where you are in abroad treat your woman like this do that for your woman there is no way we can improve so please auntie b don't stop doing what you are doing i was even before this video i was i said i was gonna beg you if you are gonna do a show to just help us highlight all those form of uh a b u s c you know so that at least men can actually understand what is classified as Abu, I don't want to call her <laughs> Finnish. Because sometimes we can't even differentiate these forms of different ones. That is why I love my sister, Chidima. Chidima always come for me sometimes when I say, okay, I don't understand this type of uh, Abu. Chidima will say, Rabbi, don't minimize people's pain. But to be frank, we need people like Anti B to do this kind of show where you actually let us know the difference so that more Nigerian men will understand that when you do this to your woman, or it doesn't matter whether she's African or American. When you do this to your woman, you are actually doing this type of abu on her, you know? So please, Auntie B, I was going to beg you to do that. Don't stop what you are doing. Again, um, I've learned, and I thank you, Auntie B, for at least uh, playing my video. I wasn't expecting it to. God bless you. And Brabio, God bless you, Baba. I respect your opinion. So please... Mm -hmm. Just like our Americans have passed. Some of you that are saying that I'm generalizing somebody something. Why don't you go and tell the person that was bashing on Nigerian men about the danger of generalizing? The entire <laughs> show has been about generalizing. Why don't you go there and tell her? 
Did Daddy, you not see the show? Probably, the person probably see? just came in today. I'm sure you were probably in the comment section hailing the person because they are bashing Nigerian men. Now I'm saying Nigerian men are the best and you guys are angry. Carry your anger Daddy. and go and sleep. Thank Bra you very much. Bra 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 thank you, you Gudu fam. Respect mm -hmm. to everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you. You people don't like it because you, you want me to agree to what the person is saying. I should come and be bashing Nigerian men here. For you guys, that's what you want to hear, right? But when the person was bashing Nigerian man, you saw it. Hmm? What were you doing in the comment section? Somebody said they were in the comment section defending Nigerian men. If you see the way they shot, they, they even blocked her. They blocked her because she was the minority in the comment section. So now that we are speaking back, and I say it unequivocally that uh, Nigerian men are the best black men in the world. You don't like it. Why don't you like it? Ask yourself that question. Why is it troubling to you when I say a statement like that? You can say, oh, actually, my countrymen are also good. They are they are, for me, they are the best. You don't have to query what I'm saying. Okay? This is my personal opinion. I stand by it. Nigerian men are the best black men in the world. If you don't like it, so be it. It's not my problem. Create your own platform or best Start uh, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> do like Lisa Tisa. Do a 50 parts and explain. You will explain, explain, tire. No evidence. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know why you guys take these things serious. Come and see us Nigerians. You see, we Nigerians sometimes will be fighting one another. If I was talking about Igbo men now, they will come and be fighting me. <laughs> so don't worry. Today is not that day. Today is the day for me to say Nigerian men are the best. Tomorrow, we might stop bashing. <laughs> oh my God. This uh, Nigerian men are the best, and that is on period. Don't argue with me. Oh. I know they okay sometimes. <laughs> you know they okay sometimes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, so it's always like that. People don't like it. But I am not afraid to speak my truth. As far as I'm concerned, I will say it over and over again. Nigerian men are the best black men in the world. Okay? All right. Thank you very much. Stop bashing Nigerian men. But we will continue to address issue one issue at a time. Okay? Like on Tuesday now. I have a Ghanaian person that is coming, and I have a woman that is coming to share, and she was married to a Ghanaian man. Some Ghanaian men, will, people will come here and say, ah, why are you talking about Ghana men? Why are you talking about, it's issue specific, eh, boy, boy. that's my problem. That when you're back, boy, boy, we'll not be having all these issues. All these issues will not be. I beg, I don't tire, two hours done. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. Tomorrow, I'm back. Oh, I have a show tomorrow night. I'm going to be talking about this one is Nigerians. We did Nigerian Minister of Women Affairs I'm talking about tomorrow so that you people will know that just because I'm Nigerian doesn't mean that you give Nigeria a pass. That's why eh, when you people come here and you're arguing, I'll just be looking at you. Me, I'm more critical of my fellow Nigerians than any of you can ever be. That is how it is. Today's own, this is how it is. Tomorrow, we'll talk about Minister. She's a Nigerian. I'm critical of her. I will say my piece. Period. Okay. Bye, guys. Osato, I'm ending now. You just jumped in now. Okay. You are from Russia, so I'm going to listen to you. Okay. Bye, guys. Osato, I'm Hi. ending now. You Good. just jumped in now. Good evening, Auntie B. You know, I, I really don't know. I really don't know how the thing works. I thought I've been in. Good evening, Auntie B. You know, I, I really don't know. Your sound is bouncing back, Osato. Ah, uh, uh, no, no, no. Your audio is not good. Sorry. You need to put on one. One device is on. One is. You need to put off one. Okay? Because I can hear myself. Osato is from Russia. Let's see what she has to say. Unmute yourself, Osato. I'm rounding up now. I'm literally one leg out of the door. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, okay. Maybe tomorrow. All right, sorry about that. I'm rounding up now. I'm literally at one leg out of the door. Okay, can you hear me? Can you hear Go me? Go ahead. Uh, yeah, you know the th tomorrow. the thing is, right, I sorry I. About that. I'm rounding up now. I'm literally at one leg out of no, the door. No, sound is still not good. Sorry, love. 
it's not good. So tomorrow, yeah, I'm here tomorrow at um, 7 p.m. GMT. Yeah, we gotta go now. Thanks, everybody. Please give us a thumbs up. Okay, appreciate you. Is issue specific? You push stop bashing Nigerian men. Is one issue at a time. Issue specific. I love my brothers. I love my men. Okay. All right. Bye bye. If you have bad experience, whether by your father or your Nigerian boyfriend, I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry about that. But they don't represent the average Nigerian man or a population. You know how many we are. Akbogo. We are many. We are plenty. Okay. Bye guys. Love you guys. Bye. See you tomorrow.